Yeah, we're looking forward to it, and I'm going to join you all on the desk. I don't know if Kenobi, you want to, but we're for sure saying caca with you Ka-ka! as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, Fun I mean, fact, that's actually a call that they made uh, for Hawk way back in, like, Contenders. Every time yep. he would hit Diva Bomb, they would say caca. So the, the real ones know about that one, but yeah. this matchup is looking to be incredible so far. And one thing that's interesting about when we go into this one, and I like that Danny brought this up on the desk, was the addition of Dong Hak into the lineup because I think that you know, the whispers that he's heard are completely true. Dong Hak is really, really prominent on Hammond. Like, it is his best hero, I would say, at the point. And I would argue that it's probably the reason he was brought into this roster to cover that hero, because there are a lot of times that we've seen where it is really important to have a Hammond player in your back pocket. Not to mention that he can also play the Winston, but that Hammond yeah. is the thing that makes Dong Hak Dong Hak. Yeah, and that's what we did get to see previously when we had Atlanta Reign on Elios. They led in with Dong Hak as well, specifically on that Winston play. There's a lot of versatility that they can utilize when it comes to each independent round. And as we are looking to get into this, I know that we had a little bit of a break before entering into this one. But Kenobi, I'm all on the edge of my seat. I'm excited, and I'd be okay with going to another map five. Oh, but that's going to be a tall ass. 100%. <laughs> I mean, this, this series has a lot to live up to between the Toronto-Boston series and the series we just had between the shock in the outlaws but if there's two teams that i would be like they could probably deliver especially with the pedigree you're seeing on your screen right now it's definitely these two absolutely and you know looking at elio specifically where we did have on the counter side as we talked a little bit about atlanta rain we have been able to see it just ever so slightly when it does come to dante you know looking to lean in a little bit with potentially the ramatra on rare occasions but again that was more a little bit into the Nepal map specifically so it'll be nice to see how that kind of shakes up as well when we look at the tank to tank battle between the two but you know even taking a wider gaze to this kenobi like the desk even said all three of them acknowledging what the support lines are able to do i consistently uh-huh. during VOD reviewing, Babel, the amount of value yeah. that the nades and the sleeps were contributing into some of these fights was absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah, and I think as we go into like talking more about the Los Angeles Gladiators and like their compositions, obviously when we talk about the Gladiators, we kind of can't not mention the fact that Dante is their main tank, but Dante, yeah. I think, on the Winston, you know, I think we saw last year had a really good performance on the outlaws they got third but you are facing up against some of the best winstons in the world one of the things i think dante has done such a good job of is ramatra and i wonder if when you know maybe the winston battle isn't working as well in their favor do we see the gladiators swap over to something a little bit more of that ramatra brawly style because i think for atlanta rain we'll probably see them tend more towards the winston and the hammond with their dive with how potent it is you have the best somber to ever play the game with lip yep. in your back line like that it, it is going to be dive all the way from atlanta on Unless we see Hawk in, that's when we see a switch formation. And Lip Lang in the back. Stalker comes in right alongside. Tempo and timing is impeccable. And that will give instantaneous value to Atlanta Reign as they will draw back to that point after potentially getting a lovely fadeaway here onto that last support. And what I love about the Atlanta Reign when they play this composition is they are so just decisive in their dives, right? You see Lip will go into the back line, find one person, Stalker and Dong Hang always right there with him every single time. And sometimes the best part about having Stalker and Lip as your DPS line, you might not even need the tank. You can just get yeah. kills because Lip is so good at this hero that you don't need the rest of the resources. Yeah, their synergy is seamless as we just saw and will continue to keep a watchful eye of Lip once again. Deja vu. There's the dive though with Dong Hang to see if they can get the extra damage, but unfortunately they are pummeled quickly. A nice one for one trade. You still losing and Lip just manages to clutch this out, getting two, and it's still gonna be three percentage gain for Rain. He's also gonna get the hack onto Kepster, so now Kepster's not, I mean, Lip just, I, that was insane that he was able to find two somewhere randomly out of that fight. And it's not like the Gladiators even played that bad. They played that super well. I love that Dante kind of dove back to try and peel. They took down Dong Hack, but Lip was still on a, unabated on that high ground. And now is looking to farm towards that EMP. will have it most likely in this next fight. And Gladiators don't really have a leg to stand on. No, not at all. And as it's already that 50 plus percent, seeing how gladiators want to take this engagement maneuvering through already going for a stick and dante is gone and that will instantaneously take this for rain and force back gladiators for another attempt 
Dude, I'm just getting giddy like thinking about this DPS line because they're like Lip yeah. is in the back line hacking Dante, takes him down to half health and immediately stalkers right there back into him and puts his pulse bomb on him. And there's no way you can get healed through that, especially if you don't have something like Nano. So they win a fight off of just one macro move and they keep their EMP for last fight territory. And Lip long flank gets the EMP onto the supports. Kepster at least able to counteract Fielder for the moment with the pulse bomb. Kepster, we've talked about heavily and what they can bring to the table. And that's one of those many that they're going to need. And this is still a chaotic fight as there's a rotation from Dong Hak to make sure that they get that healing and that sustain. The barrier is going to make sure that they can withstand the incoming fire from Kepster and buy space for Gladiators to swap this over. But still contention, wanting to guarantee that 99%. Yeah, they unfortunately walk right back into the boop of Funny Astro, and that is a lot on Kepster, like, bring that fight into neutrality because of the fact that they were able to hit that pulse. Without that, it looks like Atlanta Plain rain probably 100-0 to zero this, but now Gladiators are not in a bad position in terms of their ultimate economy, right? You have a Primal Rage from Dante, Babel is close towards that Nano, so you have some survivability for Kai in that backline as Lip, again, looking and just making... A I feel like this is a bullying of the support line with what I'm seeing right now. It's just... A, a ghost in the night just lurking waiting to take advantage of anyone left out in the open it's just sending shivers down anyone's spine and now gladiators looking to try and maintain on this position to gain percentage even further but kai eliminated stalker finds it and everything shifts on its head once again the primal rage committed to knock back get rid of a bell now focusing down dante who has to leap to flee they actually commit the primal rage into this because again they want to continue generating this percentage because at this point if it swaps back over it's in the overtime it's 99 percent already because rain got it to this position and lip is about to have an emp as well so gladiators are walking into this fight and they don't have anything to work with just the high noon oh. already down. this emp is going to do so much i don't even know if lip needs it in this fight nope there was a sleep a hack everything stacks up onto dante left alone across the pit this will be rain able to with a dominant force be able to take this first round Atlanta rain i mean this is kind of the atlanta rain that we've been promised right like we talked about like even when like the School. The team was announced and like all these roster moves came through. Stalker being here, Lip, the greatest somber player of all time, coming over to NA from APAC. You bring in a championship winning backline in Chio and Fielder, and then you still have two tanks who are very consistent in how they play and have really good specialities. So I think this Atlanta Rain team going forward looks like a team to be reckoned with throughout this bracket and also going into Overwatch League as we do go now to our next map, which is going to be, I didn't know that there was a, that's I, two Hammonds. That's two Hammonds. It is. I did not know that either. You know, sometimes we learn things, right? I, I did both know Kenobi and I people. learned today. <laughs> As we're entering now onto runes where we were going to see the legendary wrecking ball play to counter against gladiators and there's no sombra on the other side as well so dong will have a lot of maneuverability in this back line as you can already see going for that pile driver seeing what they can find and setting up for the rest of those dps to follow and the crowd control is so consistent almost getting the knockoff here as well but even though they don't find themselves off the edge it's still going to be lip able to capitalize on this and again it's these peaks and valleys that come through from the winston play where there's a lot more sustainability with the wrecking ball that has not nearly as high highs but also not nearly as low lows yeah and the thing about the winston that i i like from glides there and what they tried to do was they tried to just kind of go to the back line themselves and see if they could find any picks before the picks came through on the elena rain after dong Hank had his initial dive in but dong Hank is so good at just resetting in terms of having ball like he comes out sometimes where you're not really expecting him to he did, you're not expecting him uh, hammond to come back into that engage and then he's right there boom pile driving you and the rest of the team follows up Yep, Kai consistently being harassed. The, already the pile drive, getting to half health. Dong Hak continuing to just harass and cause damage and keeping this really watchful eye where both the Bell and Funny Astro have to stick very close. 30% still in climbing. Stalker rounding the corner, has the pulse bomb, hesitates before looking to enter in onto this. They want to do some more chip damage onto Dante before committing this. The stick Ooh. actually on to the Bell. Can't withstand it. Minefield as well into the pile drive. Kai just gets set six feet under with the impact from on high. And you can see how much they're trying, like the gladiators, to like push and pull through these engages, but there's so much disruption that this Atlanta composition brings to the table that it feels like gladiators are always behind the eight ball a little bit in terms of when they want to make these engages. They can't set up properly because there's so much disruption coming in from the hand. And if that's not enough, you're getting hacked, you're getting run on by Stalker. Like there's so much. Here's an EMP just for the heck of it. I don't even think Lip had any follow up there, but they get out a nano somehow, yeah. so that's already good. 
Yeah, and now Dante extremely low. Great damage pushed onto both Kai and Kevster, but Kai still able to withstand quite a bit of it. Regroups, nice job as the sleep comes in from Babel to swap this back and get some percent on the board for Glads. Yeah, that one felt like maybe like Lip was like, hey, maybe I can just three man EMP. I'm the best Sombra to ever play the game. Maybe I can do it. I can figure out a way. They do get a lot from it. Like they are able to find the Primal Rage from Dante. They get out the Nano. They get out the uh, Brigitte Rally as well. That Overheld will eventually start taking off. And now Atlanta Rain can come back in. They have a Katsuna Rush to work with and they're going to have Chios beat soon. Oh my goodness, but Fielder just going to get picked up very quickly as they look to contribute that Kitsune Rush across the center. Health Valley's being topped up for Gladiators, being able to hold on quite easily here, and that's going to be an opportunity for them to keep gaining percentage for free. It was it was great positioning by Kevster, who knew that engage was coming, and then as soon as Fielder opts in to throw that Kitsune Rush, he instantly almost one clips him, and Dante finishes off the kill. I think that was a really well-set-up dive from the Gladiators, who played that at a deficit, which is something really hard to do so that is some communication really helping them out as here comes the minefield onto that back line that was a great coordination across the bridge an opportunity though for both kai and babel to maneuver out of the pile drive range with the assistance from dante and the shield so they aren't in the midst of it kevster with the full swamp also guarantees that they deny the sound barrier kai hit by this in a very critical sense with only 11 hp gets assistance from the support line and again babel being their clutch as we talked about time and time again to reset for kai to take the picks it's also the brigitte as well having funny ash in this scenario to be able to pocket Babel and pocket Kai in these scenarios where Donghag is getting in aggressively. You can basically guarantee yourself that you're going to be getting Inspire procs and Gladiators are at 80% right now. Lip is trying to find a way to get this EMP as Atlanta Rain will most likely use that EMP and then combo along with a tempo beat to try and brute force their way into this fight. Yeah, the adaptability from Gladiators and the way that they're playing to counteract Lip is huge to get picked. Kai sent back to spawn. The rally was there, but only seconds late to give the extra protection necessary. Dante still being extremely critical. Nice job keeping the sustain for the moment as their health values finally reach zero. Rain swaps it back. 99 for Glads. They need to look for one last reset here, getting out so they can have another attempt. Oh, they need to retreat. Actually, if that Pulse Bomb would have oh, hit Funny no. Astro, that would have been over. But with Funny Astro dying, that's still really bad for the Gladiators in this scenario. They might not be able to have a full group of members to get back onto this point. Dante has the Primal Rage. He slept on. Oh, he slept. No. He's not going to be able to touch. It has to be. It has to be Kevster. And now Dante he might be has to able go. to. Get... Yep, the jump finally comes in. Nice boot from Shio. They have to force the Primal Rage to keep consistency onto the point. And now drawing it out even longer. The hack is there, goes for the Mega, looking to jump back in once it's faded. And you can just see Dante looking and calling out where they need to be to be able to take this back. But Stalker gets two, Kevster retaliates, Fielder eliminated. It's still Reigns game right now as they dominate on this point. It's only Kevster with a hope, a prayer, and a dream, but they can't manage to do so as Atlanta Reign takes this first map. And that's what a championship winning backline looks like. That entire last like five <laughs> seconds of Dante just not being able to play the game is indicative of the strength of this backline. The fact that Fielder slept him from like yeah. Narnia, like slept him from Narnia as he's jumping in. And then on top of that, Chio, as Dante has to come through, Chio boops him, forcing Dante to primal, and then he gets hacked. And then it's just like, I can't play yeah. the game. Like that was an incredible sequence coming out from the support line of the Atlanta Rain. And it's only seconds away from getting the barrier down to deny that sleep dart. And those five seconds is just so vital for them to be able to force out all of this as we take a look at some of the replays just all around Atlanta Rain. Even though they gave some distance, they were always able to come back with a dominant force and get the extra mile. And I think as well with uh, Atlanta and like how they played this, there were some moments where Kepster kind of did what Kepster is known to do and brings a fight back where it really wouldn't seem winnable at all. But the way that Atlanta, I mean, it is fighter pilot squadron-esque, the way that when they see someone out and about, Lip is just right there, Stalker's right there, even not even that, but like when they rotate and like sometimes Lip goes in first, then the follow-up from Stalker, right? The kind of way that they ebb and flow these dives is really impeccable to watch. It's like Maverick and Goose for all those that are going to know that reference, but we'll let you figure that, that one out. You're showing your age a bit there. Too. That's why we're going to No, 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 there was, Top Gun, there was Top Gun Maverick, so you're saved see, a little bit. See, I'm <laughs> saved a little bit. I'm not going to demonstrate exactly how old I am, but for those that are here watching, we've already seen one map down. We've got a second coming up in just a moment, so don't go anywhere as we'll see you on the other side of this break.
that out. That is the delay tactics widely dealt in a 4v5 hold. Not quite so much anymore. Kevster dishing out the damage. This is giving me vibes of Florida against the Atlanta Rain. What is dirty? A rough return here. Just kind of getting bullied. That is it. Hello, many goodbye to the rest of your team, Decay, because Lastro's on the field. Nano Zen, just to keep him alive. Rolling, trying to keep him alive. And I draw, oh boy. Punched into oncoming traffic. Dante shuts him down. The Glad hype video is here and now. As I can guarantee you, they're looking to hold their shields high and be the phalanx that is needed to try and take a map away from Atlanta Rain. Kenobi, you know, looking back at what we've got, it's been exciting so far already on this control map. They've been doing their best to try and counteract this, but the way that Atlanta Rain has been playing, it's been absolutely impeccable. And it definitely helps when you have the greatest Sombra player of all time to yeah. enable those dives, right? Like that, it really is something incredible to see just by the virtue that like Lip has been playing. And I think like when we talk about Lip as like a historical figure in Overwatch, like obviously Overwatch World, uh, Overwatch League World Champion, um, but the fact that they've been able to do it on two different games, right? You know, in Overwatch 1, revolutionized the way the Sombra was played. Now doing it again here on kind of a new Sombra, the fact that he's continued to be this basically stalwart, what everyone looks up to as being the best Sombra in the world, he's incredible. And I think he should be commended for the fact that he's been able to be this consistently good at Sombra for this consistently amount of time. Yeah, it's it's so monumental in the way that they execute onto this. And you can see it with that one, one death. death. Yeah, one like, come death. on, like the stats, like, let's be real. But, you know, as we talk about it, we can also take a look at some changes that are actually going to come to these rosters oh. going into this and uh, seeing what they're going to bring to this next map, Kenobi. And this makes, you know, this is kind of standard to what we've seen with the Atlanta Rain going from, uh, control into these maps where they have, you know, when it's our Antarctic Peninsula, they usually have Hawk in to play Ramatra, a little bit more brawl heavily favored, but bring Hawk in onto these other maps where potentially you can play a little bit more D.Va. Ramatra is still also good as well. As we go to Hollywood as our map, we also did see that Astro is out and Lastro is in. So that screams to me double support look coming in from the Glads, most likely going to be Ana and Kiriko if the group stages are anything to go by. And we do have Atlanta Rain on the attack first to see if Gladiators, as I mentioned, are able to hold their shields high and deny completion here and do the best they can to take this second map. Could be one of those moments, like we mentioned, we'd love to see five maps, but again, it's a tall task here for Gladiators and what we've seen and what we've talked about, you and I specifically have been really hyping up what Atlanta Rain has been working on. We've seen their scrims, we've seen the way that they've played, what they bring to this, their roster, all these different facets and why they are the favorites across the board here and gladiators not wanting to get knocked out and bring a little bit of an upset against this team as we do get to see what the composition finally looks like and lasher is going to be partnered specifically with this brig alongside Bacall. where where did it come from where, where, it's, where, i know right uh, it's it's just almost out of nowhere poof brigitte's i mean maybe in the hole Maybe they're prepping Ace for the, the <laughs> they're prepping for the the buff that she's going to be getting yeah. soon. Maybe that's what they're doing. But I mean, it feels like the Brigitte is something that a lot of people are opting more towards instead of something like a Zenyatta. It's obviously again I talked about this in the last series. It's good at like helping out the tracer because um, armor packs are really adept at helping your tracer in those types of matchups. But on the other end. It is going to be a little bit of a tricky situation because, yes, Kevster is going to have the ability to have armor packs in his back pocket, but the one thing he is going to have to worry about is Discord because Vigilante yep. is going to be on that Zenyatta, and Discord makes Tracer v. Tracers so, so hard to pivot. Yeah, the TBT is extremely important between these two because of those subtle offsets. Yes, there is this brig that brings value, but I 100% agree that Vigilante is going to be able to give a lot more acceleration to Stalker. Nice Bionade denying it. Kevster gets the pickup onto Fielder as there is this retreat. Vigilante down below getting some decent volleys, but now left separated for the moment. Divided from the team. The shield blocks the damage, and they've almost been able to get one tick, but unfortunately have to recede, and now Vigilante! Oh, oh, that's, that is that is not one that I think they were expecting. And I like no, actually going to get a tick. They're going to get a tick. Glad's just, Glad's went to find Vigilante. Vigilante said, call an ambulance, not for you, but, or not for me, but for you. And that's going to be a tick over for Atlanta. And they have positioning now. 
Yep, and underneath Stalker is gonna try and play this high and low ground positioning and looks to just collapse onto Babel. There is a trade out for both Cassidy, so they are eliminated from the equation. They're still gaining percent as the fight wavers to the side. Some contention available because of Kepster, and this is just now all finally falling apart. Gladiator is able to recover and deny Rain from getting any more. Nana was used onto Babel though, and, or from Babel onto Dante, and Dante wasn't able to get the Primal Rage in time, so it is gonna be scary for him to take these dives, because again, he has to be worried about that Discord Orb just blowing him up, because the healing might not be there in time. And now, half the clock dwindled. Fielder, topping everyone up, making sure that they can look for re-entry on this. There comes the jump from Dante. Pulse in the back. Fielder is instantly shut down with a lovely dead eye to come in. Target practice indeed on to lift as they will hold the line for now. It's super interesting to me that we're not seeing that we're seeing Atlanta kind of move away from like a TVT in scenario because Kepster has been basically free farming that backline yeah. a lot of the time and given a lot of space, which is if there's someone who I don't want to give space to on Tracer, it is Kepster. So I wonder if we do see some changes coming in from the Atlanta rain to maybe put a little bit more respect on Kepster and focus him down. Dante's gonna blitz forward with the primal rage knowing that they have that at the disposal transcendence from vigilante lip just ever so slightly trying to peek grabs the shot onto lastro couldn't quite dash out of range behind for cover so that gives atlanta rain the space they need to push onto this point guaranteeing the second ticket at this point they're clear to get the third since no one from glads can get back in time yeah, a little bit of a wallet diff there from the Atlanta rain. They had all their ultimates. They kind of just threw them in, knowing that Gladiators didn't have any support ultimates in their own. There wasn't going to be enough to sustain them through the Transcendence healing that Vigilante had. And that's really the value you get from something like a Zenyatta some of these times. Beyond that long-range healing is that you're healing or wrong range damage and healing. You're healing in Transcendence instant instead of something like a break where you have to build it up a little bit. Ooh, Dante. Very, very low on entry, but nice assistance from the back line. Babel pumping, keeling into them to sustain through this as they continue to maintain this high ground. Atlanta Rain being very cautious and cognizant of how they push into this to see what they can do. Dante actually just getting shredded consistently from that down below angle. And now with pressure from Stalker, could look for some transition across the bridgeway to take down the back line. But it's, again, it's this patience from Atlanta Rain, which is so, so precise. Hawk finally takes advantage of the subtle weakness that Gladiator has in their separation and continue pushing. And they just know that if Dante ever peeks out into any area, Discord goes directly on him and then the follow-up is right there from Stalker. And not even that, but the long-range damage Lip is doing as well is really impacting Dante's ability to maneuver these fights as Kevster's looking for a pulse bomb here. Recalls back on the high crown. Threading the needle right now. Walking into three, gets the pulse bomb. Yeah, Lip's just gonna say, I'll stand still. Might as well, just not going anywhere. I know I'm back in spawn, as there is a couple of decent picks down below. Rain, despite them getting a decent push about halfway through the second stage, they've managed to get some decent value in recovery here. With two minutes to go, now the DMX gonna make it a little more challenging. I wonder if there was a nano there from Fielder onto Vigilante, just because they thought that maybe they were stuck instead. It actually, because I think it probably would have saved Lip's life if the nano had gone onto Lip in that scenario, but unfortunately it doesn't end up working out that way. Maybe just stood in front of him or something like that. But Atlanta Rain do come back into this. A minute and 30 seconds, not a lot of time. And Gladiators actually, in terms of their ultimate economy, not looking too shabby. They do have a nano, so they can, if they would like to, go a little bit early or keep it defensively to deal with Pulse. Pulse bomb, not gonna land. Unfortunately, they've lost that for now, solely reliant on what they have from Lip, Vigilante, and Hawk as they look to utilize that elevator. This ebb and flow to the high ground with Hawk still getting quite a bit of damage put onto them. They've maneuvered away, at least from that payload for now, since it's being consistently contested by Gladiators, and the time continues to dwindle. Vigilante gets jumped on, pounced immediately, and will force back Rain, because they need to recover for one last engagement on this. Yeah, Hawk is gonna get DMAC too, and I wonder if we're gonna just see Hawk go back and swap and see if they can switch to something else but before they get taken down, that is, if they can even get back in. But no, Babel comes in with the anti nade Dante will end up going down, which is, it is a big deal because there is gonna be that space have to be given up now. Kevster's also dead too, with the Zenyatta little assist in the background. That's Vigilante helping out. And what looked like to be a great position for the Glads is completely destroyed. Yeah, the stagger is not going to be helpful. Lip continues to take 
and dismantle gladiators on their retreat. Babel falls as well with a follow through by Hawk. They've gained so much distance now, even though their time is low, it's not a full five from gladiators yet. And Rich, what did they do? They got it for absolutely nothing. Just some yeah. over extensions from the glads. So now Atlanta Reign have an ultimate economy to work against what glads are going to be having as their last defense before C. Dante dives forward, it almost gets blown up, but barely gets the Primal Rage out in time, and is gonna walk right into Lip, jumping to the high ground. The Discord Orb was there as well, and getting some assistance finally from Babel and Lastro down below. The stick comes in, Dante's health just peaking and falling, once and again rising and falling throughout this last engagement. It is still going to be Atlanta Rain able to weather everything that Gladiators can do so, and this checkpoint now will finally be reached and look for the home stretch. As Unfortunately, Kepster ain't gonna last long. Not gonna be able to stall as much as they can. And Atlanta Rain, I mean, you're, I think this is kind of a gift for them, honestly. Like, the, the way that Gladiators were playing, it was so good. They were, had really good positioning, but just a few couple of oversteps, which is something we've seen from the Gladiators, really hampers them and gives Atlanta a way back into this because they did use a lot, Atlanta, but so did Gladiators in that fight. They do have a high noon to work with. They also have a nano relatively soon, but they need to be able to string two fight wins together to be able to hold. Oh, that's a nice way to start, though. Stalker eliminated. Though they do have still a pretty decent close spawn to get back into this as they buy a few more seconds Oof. of time. But Vigilante, again, we're going to just see them get these great volley picks. Oh, and there comes the Nano onto the Winston, into the back oh. line. Can they keep Lip alive? They cannot with nope. Kepster there as well. Just too overwhelming with that Nano boost. And again, that buys them so much space. And now with only 30 seconds, this is looking quite dire for Rain. I mean, Vigilante was able to kill Kepster. So now this is a moment where Atlanta Rain can move forward a little bit and not have to worry about the Tracer. Glides are going to have to seed this positioning that they've already gotten right now, but there is a pulse bomb for both of these teams in this next fight. It is going to be something that can break it open completely, throwing it on one of those backlight members, because there are no support ultimates to deal with it. Kepster looking hidden. Jumping in from up top and manages to get lit. With only seconds remaining, it is a numbers advantage over Rain. Self-destruct tossed into the mix, zoning multiple members back. Kepster with the Discord or has to play carefully since there is a chance for recovery since it's still pretty decently close to where the spawn is from Rain. Health values continuing to just elevate with the support's assistance, but unfortunately, Hawk is gonna get DMACC. Can't sustain that much throughput that's coming in from Gladiators defensively. The Deadeye gets one on to lip in the back. They poke their head out and find themselves once again being Ooh. shut down. There's some trades back and forth, and this is now unfortunately not going to last any longer as you will have Vigilante yeah, not it's... be able to get close. And you can even see Kevster <laughs> saying it in chat. You know I, I what it is, friend. I don't know if they would have won, but Vigilante definitely could have gotten there, especially with Transcendence available to them. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll count it. We'll count it. We're generous today. We'll count that as a C9. We'll count that. Yeah. We, we'll, we'll count that. We won't sing it this time, but we'll count it. Yeah, no, no singing, but we no will singing. count it. We've... we've, we've we, the, no, it's the really bad our audience enough to be fair there is still more time and for all of those in the chat when it does there happen, could be a really you bad have one, to join in true. yeah there could be a really bad one that we actually get all of chat to start saying it in the channel and be just like let's go oh here we go are we are we gonna get prod to do it prod's gonna do it okay well if we get prod to do it uh then then we might just have to sing and we'll get all of you included because i know our obs are gonna do it there here we go so here we go kenobi ready na 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 okay yeah yeah it's a c9 it's a c9 yeah yeah it's yeah that's that's pretty bad they would they might not have won let me be very clear they might not have won but like they were right there they could have kept that one going it doesn't matter uh, if anything when we finally get back to like a land environment once again when we've got these teams playing against one another it's going to be you and me on the main floor <laughs> just just getting the entire crowd to do that that's what's going to happen that's what we're hoping as we are entering now into this uh, can you imagine the hope. blizzard arena doing that oh All let's go let's go <laughs> that's what we want that's what we want just like we want to see gladiators be able to take this attack and gain the completion for an even one-to-one -one score but atlanta rain is not one to let that go so easily as they look to be on the defensive side and see if they can hold them back with hawk now coming out onto the d and one of the things that we didn't get to touch on really is Vigilante specifically on this Indiana on the offense. We don't see it too much on the offensive end. It is, you know, good on this map in particular because you have the long sight lines everywhere you go. But on the defensive end, it's even more deadly. And Vigilante has gotten a couple of volleys that the Gladiators weren't expecting. And you can see Vigilante playing so well around the architecture here, utilizing it, sticking close. A couple of decent 
chips of damage coming in though from gladiators to force them back getting some decent space it almost has the initial tick they need to come back in to try and contest this lip gets hit by the bio but hawk able to counteract it playing against kai in the back line nobody's ready for it and despite us seeing a lot of this defense matrix utilizing the support coverage he gets two then rotates back hawk just completely assisting even though fielder goes down they've already won this I mean, it felt like the Glads were caught in two minds there, right? Where Kai and Lastro weren't necessarily with the rest of the dive, and Atlanta saw their opportunity, went into that back line. They, especially because of the fact that when you have Babel, who likes to take these very aggressive flanks as Kiriko, Ofuda still needs time to be able to reach that target and heal them. And if Lastro is being forced out, Kai can instantly die to a Diva, no problem. And now with half the time dwindled, Curious to see how you're going to have Gladiators maneuver into this because the positioning from Atlanta Rain has been very, very well structured. The dive comes in, the Nano is there. Ton of fan the hammers from Lip onto that Winston play. The Nano boost gets them close to that Primal Rage, but not just yet. There is some time. Beautiful eat by Hawk onto Kepster's Pulse Bomb. So they've nullified that for now and have only lost so far one tick as they continue to contest down below. Vigilante with that Transcendence keeps sustained, but it's still three ultimates to Atlanta Reign's name to withstand this. And there's even a Pulse Bomb that comes in onto Dante. They're able to kill Dante. Bob Bell is actually going to commit the Katsune Rush here. They want to try and buy back into this one. Dante will eventually back, be back into this fight, but there's so much ability for Atlanta Rain to stop the bleeding in this scenario that the there's not really a lot of gain from the Katsune Rush. Yeah, Hawk continuing to play that doorway, denying a lot of the damage despite them being hit by it. Finally gets d with the regroup because they do have some great distance coverage with Gladiators from their spawn to get back in with numbers. Primal Rage active. What a sleep to deny to keep them up top, but all the while you still have stalker able to get at least one this is back and forth between the two as it is just a consistent Big over two and a half with kepster finally opening up the floodgates for gladiators as that will be the play that they needed to transition into the streets phase and i mean when gladiators can get into a position where they can set up their dives specifically with dante and kepster and they can kind of just grab the game by the scruff of the neck and just say we're winning this one that's where gladiators really thrive is in those moments where the fight's evolve a little bit and it's complete chaos and they don't really know how to continuously keep track of Kepster. You lose track of them sometimes and Kepster can do what we just saw by getting a 3k as Kai goes over to their specialty Widowmaker here. We know how good it is on Hollywood B. We'll see if the Atlanta rain is going to greed a little bit and peak these angles. Yeah, it was over a minute and a half of that fight. So at that point, you can only track so much until finally they're able to slide into oh. the shadows. And <laughs> oh my goodness, I think we all had a moment. Oh, oh, that's going to no. be a moment. That's going to be a moment. <laughs> Lastro's going to say, uh-uh, I'm laying you out, stalker. Oh, and the Nano Boost comes in onto Dante. They're going to try and take control of this high ground. Lip is Nano, though, in return. Ooh, a lot of damage into that small room, but Dante playing the hay bale for the moment. Not quite yet ready to dive back in until they actually change trajectory, getting lift on the flanking position near the elevator. Suzu Ooh. secures that they will mitigate that pulse bomb. Beautifully yeah. timed, and Atlanta Rain unfortunately not feeling too good right now about that. Another good sleep from Lastro as well. Taking down Hawk gets woken up eventually, but Gladiators are moving and grooving through, or, to, through the second point. They also have a Pulse Bomb to work with, so Kepster can get into that back line and potentially get another two kills or force out something like Transcendence. Ooh, Kepster goes for it. Stick goes wide, though. That would have been a beautiful opportunity for Gladiators to get both Vigilante and Fielder, but they weather that as there is a couple of shots. Decent angle. Kai, very vulnerable and can't quite seem to get a pin point on the stalker in the back and that's one of the kind of dangers about winston in this scenario uh, against something like a diva where it's like you get a lot of peel specifically from the diva that would have been able to maybe keep kai alive but kai is going to be going over to the hanzo a little bit more self-reliant you know has that ability to climb walls not really rely on grapple and also you can just take down fielder completely from across the map you get logged that's sometimes how it goes with hanzo yep love some tree trunks love to see it Mahogany. now have 
It ma real, real mahogany. <laughs> Only the best type of furniture comes from those. <laughs> Only from those the best arrows. mahogany logs coming in. Absolutely. From the this is made with real mahogany. <laughs> As the payload's still pushing, Atlanta Rain, you know, they're just kind of being routed away from this. And despite the time being very low, the Kitsune Rush should be able to guarantee this as long as they focus fire. Beautiful Bionade to come through by Lastro into the back. Gladiator's feeling really good about this as they only just have over two meters. Babel, oh, oh scary now as you have to swift stuff out of there. Oh, the respawn advantage is closer for Atlanta Rain, but I mean, eventually they will just force them out. And I think that the reason that they won that fight was because literally Kai hit what, you know, hit a mahogany log and with Fielder <laughs> not there, you lose so much ability to heal, especially because you've opted into the Zinyar. Look at how forward they're going to play. Thankfully, there is the Suzu to get Dante out of that extensive sleep to recover and fall back. So they will be able to manage, but Lip now on the Sombra with the EMP. Going to unleash it, landing on the two, and we're right back into the standard control and well-placed tempo and timing. Hawk follows up onto both, instantly shutting them down and denying it with only a minute and 30 now on the clock. Yeah, that's when you have to take on the chin if you're the gladiators in the scenario. Babel needs to, to leave, like, now. There's no way you want to get staggered in a scenario like this with one minute and 30 seconds left. The, the scary thing about this is, is that Atlanta Rain just used one ultimate to win that fight, so Lip uses EMP, but look at everything else. It seems pretty much even between both of these teams, and with the transcendent healing that's going to be coming from Vigilante, they can blanket a lot of what the Houston now or the Los Angeles Gladiators are going to be doing in this next fight. Oh, that was so, so cool by Kai to be able to dash out of there, but also a reposition as well. Just threading the needle from both sides, getting critically dangerous with this final push with 60 seconds to go. Kai looking and seeking for Whoa. a pickup and gets Stalker as they dash in point blank range and is able to follow up on it. The nano boost now, Babel gets the shutdown on Talib. Bull DPS completely eradicated from this exchange and now look to complete it. The golden box right there, ready to go. Dragon strike through the choke, denying them coming from the spawn under one meter. Stalker now looking to come back in, bolstered their morale with the pulse bomb on to Kai, but I don't think it's enough. There's still a chance. Hawk with the self-destruct. Stalk the anti for the moment. They have the anti. They're denying it. It's got Dante eliminated, but the Katsune rush. Hawk still holding. They're keeping it contested. They've got 18 seconds and they might just be able to recover, but the spawn is closer for rain. Kev is able to kill Vigilante here. You're right. Hawk is able to go into that self-destruct, get a new life. Kev is killed too. Swift. The entire backline is gone. The swift step was there to mitigate out of the way, but the pulse bomb goes awry, but it's still there with presence of Stalker heading on to Kai. It's going to be kept surrounding the center. The numbers advantage. Rain can't get back into this. Gladiators with their shields held high. Look to bash them back. They can't go on to it. And now it's a one-to-one -one map score with Los Angeles Gladiators taking Hollywood. Well, I mean, who knows? Maybe that C9 really did impact the fight. Maybe those, like, small centimeters of Vigilante not getting back onto the cart really impacted how that map went. As you can see, Gladiators looking happy about that one as they are going to be able to tie this series up. Kai, I think, got some uh, props from Face there. Definitely yeah. showed up. I mean, the Hanzo towards the back end, absolutely spectacular from them. And Gladiators bring this back to even keel as we're going to see some replays here. Kepster, I mean, what more can you say about this guy? In that last fight, too, just killing both the supports yep. and just securing that one for the Gladiators. I mean, this guy is something else. And again, when it comes to these extensive fights, their ability to recover through chaos is so, so great because they just constantly keep this level head and Rain, unfortunately, just ever so slightly lose a little bit of control. And those moments that they lose it, it's when you're going to have this squad from Gladiators be able to take it back. And oh, that's just clean. That's just clean. I, I, I mean, it really is a thing where I think that the Glads, because of their mechanical skill and because of the way that this team is so strong as a strong like together and strong in their mechanical plays like when those fights break out and when we're in these like elongated engagements right i think the, a lot of the fights that we won that we won from the glads it was like uh, 60 seconds 90 seconds two, two minutes fights like we're having these really elongated fights where stalker and lip are so good and atlanta are so good on those engages when they're in the neutral when they can stage but when the fight devolves they lose track of Stalker, they lose or they lose track of Kepster, they lose track of Dante sometimes, right? Dante yeah. jumped and killed Lip just randomly during one of those fights. Like that's not happening in a staged fight. So if Gladiators can bring it kind of to where the fights are a little bit more devolved, we got a series on our hands. 
Yeah, we really do. One to one so far. But again, we have a short break before entering into that third game to see who pulls ahead. So don't go anywhere because we're excited to see who's going to take this next map. We return for some more intense Overwatch. We have seen it go head to head right now. One map score to one map score, Kenobi. And now we enter into our third map. Again, we get to see even more escort. And we've actually got a simple sub that's going to come in, which is one I think that you and I, even when we were on the break, but before we even get into that sub, we do want to recognize the stat card, though, because yeah. this was absolutely unbelievable to see these two match up. And the way that we saw each of them 
act independently in their own method to get these types of numbers. Yeah, and I think you can kind of look at kind of the differences in these numbers, right? I think Stalker definitely got more pressure put on him, and that's why there are a lot more deaths, or not a lot more, like, you know, 1.5 more. But the reason that I think that Kevster and Stalker are so interesting as players, because they both played relatively different, right? Stalker, a lot of the time, felt like was mostly just trying to get those tanks, not really focusing too much on that backline, whereas Kevster was really just, a lot of the times when those fights devolved, would go into that back line and take down, you know, someone like a Chia, take down someone like a Fielder. So it was an interesting look at both of these two players who are extremely good at Tracer. These stats indicate it inevitably, but as we go into our next match, we do have a sub coming in. It's going to be Donghak coming in, which is interesting because we've only seen him on control ever. Now coming in to this map, which is going to be Havana on Escort. And this tells me like, it, it screams to me ball. Absolutely. Every time I see, every time I see Donghak in the lineup, it's like, it's it's gotta be ball, especially on Havana. Yep, yeah, with that. Because the other part of it too, is there are some really, really great tech plays that you can do to get those pile drives, to have that crowd control, to find those little avenues to bolo multiple players out into an unfavorable position as we're going to be entering onto Havana first. And realistically, I'm just super excited that uh, we get to see a little bit more Wrecking Ball because I think we're all waiting to see the magical tech that is the Wrecking Ball play coming out from Dolphin. Yeah. I hope we don't get Winston. I really don't. I mean, maybe, or maybe like we get surprised with like a Sigma or something like that. Maybe that is something that Donghak has been cooking up in the in the lab while they've been waiting, you know, to, to get into the Overwatch League. But we don't see a Widowmaker here, which is interesting because I think if you have Kepster and Kai, you would tend to think that that would be something that they'd bring to the table. Um, but I think it's fine, especially because I think Kepster's Tracer has been phenomenal. Kai, especially after the Hollywood that we saw, Hanzo seems to be where that's trending. Do we see Atlanta Rain opt in for the Widowmaker themselves? Because we know while Lip is a really good Somber player, the Widowmaker is also something that he has shown and has shown proficiency on in the past. And the thing that the Widowmaker does allow you is a little bit more of that long range one shot potential, but it looks like it is going to be a dump weight. I saw Junker Queen and I was like, there's no, no way. <laughs> just let's 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 have a, let's leave that for a moment and we'll just let that simmer. We were we close get enough to, to where we were I close know. enough where I was like I was like there's no shot. Like yeah, oh, not I in think, this map. I think chat would have lost it too, be just like no -uh. like we're gonna start doing this totally in our games as well in comp is we're now gonna be entering in onto it here. We do see the deviation away from the Widowmaker that it's not gonna be the bread and butter that they want to bring I'm into this stalker and lift going to once again coordinate themselves to find a very clean execution, as you can already see Lastro in the sights, watching and waiting to sneak up and jump from in the dark, and there it is! Oh my goodness! Lash, Lashro didn't see that one coming. That nope! Was, oof, dude, there, there was no help, but Kai is able to trade one back onto Liv. Dante is taking a lot of damage from other angles, and don't hack in this position. I mean, it's going to be hard to heal him unless the Kiriko goes up there as the pile driver comes in, try to get onto that back line and force out some pressure. I mean, again, and, and Donghak just really understanding the angular momentum that the Wrecking Ball brings into this. And again, oh. they weren't particularly in line with the healing, but Lip now is going to get that stagger pick onto Dante as well. This is just really falling apart for Gladiators. And now you're going to consistently see again this pile drive onto Kai, having them draw attention away. They can't even look at the rest of the squad of Rain because they're constantly having to keep check on to where this Wrecking Ball play is. And they can't kill Donghak. I mean, he's no. getting low. Yes, I mean, they finally managed to get the kill, but look at all the space that's created here. I think it was a little bit of miscoordination though. Atlanta gets too big for their britches in that scenario and Donghak took way too much damage in that scenario where I was thinking if they would have been capped, you know, do we see something like a Somber instead? Do we see something like a Zenyatta? But actually I think the Brigitte does do a lot, especially a Brigitte the caliber of Lastro to negate a lot of the dives that Donghak is gonna be bringing to the table. And with the fact that Gladiators didn't pick the Widowmaker because of the fact that there is a Hammond on the other side, Gladiators know that this is coming. So they have a set defense ready for it. The problem is that Lip was on the other side and he's invisible and he can stage from wherever. Nice angle to get that stun onto Babel up top, but is easily dislodged. Pulse Bomb comes through, Vigilante no longer available. And this is gonna be a, a great reset here because now we have under two minutes. Like that is more than half the yeah. time bank gone from that initial push. I 
think one of the other things that is so valuable about Hanzo in this situation, especially against what the rain is running, is that the fact that you have Recon. Recon is so adept at dealing with Sombras and scouting them out. Kai has already gotten two kills off of Lip as Atlanta Rain is going to come back into this. EMP is available, and here comes the engage. Three. Lastro, though, with the rally, attempting to give armament for the rest of the squad. Dante being able to stick close to that payload to pincer both between the wall and the payload to reduce the sight lines for them to get topped up by Babel up top. And you can see again, Donghak consistently giving pressure onto Babel, but now they've got the Ant Matrix to increase the healing, just looking right into the eyes of the ball, constantly being harassed, but still surviving. This is beautifully done until Fielder gets the takedown and these stacks start to come in. Rain in a position now to reduce the remaining few and look to reach this checkpoint. Uh, I mean, it, Gladiators are going to be heartbroken that they lost that. I think Dante was playing so well, especially. The fact that Babel lived for as long as they did after all of those engages was off the back of Dante just holding that defense matrix on him. So again, the Gladiators are doing a really decent job of negating these dives when they are coming in from the Atlanta rain. It just was too much for them to deal with once the fight evolved. Now Babel has gone over to the Ana and a little bit more enclosed area here, offers themselves a little bit more self-peel as well. You do lose the immortality field, but it probably wasn't getting enough, um, as much value anyways, especially against the Sombra. Attempt now on the pile drive, a little bit off of position, so it couldn't get the knock up or no follow up onto the support line with the shield there from Lastro on the brig. But it's still just, again, just pressure time and time. It's almost just like a hornet continuing to sting you over and over and over again from different angles. A one-for-one -one trade. Lip goes down, but they've lost the support for gladiators, so it's all on Babel for the moment. Dante, very forward, is able to survive due to the oh. sweep. The self is going to clip him and gets the pick up. Oh, my. Sorry, friend. You slept and you woke up to a nightmare. That's one way to take down a hammer. Just throw down, <laughs> throw down your self-destruct right in front of him while he slept. And that's one of the things that Ana does offer is that ability to CC the ham. And, and you can see Donghak has actually said, you know what, we're in too close to Varia. Sleep Dart is much easier to hit here. I'm going to be going over to something else. Actually does bring out the Sigma here. So there is going to be a little bit more of that poke potential coming in from the Atlanta rain that the Gladiators will have to respect. Oh, that volley almost hits Kevster as they maneuver away. Oh, okay. Well, that's just an easy four for the EMP. Dante gonna go to sleep. Also having some Ooh. dreams. Might not be as scary, but there are takedowns elsewhere around as they rotate back to the payload. A flanking position. Stalker just comes in, gets the DMAC, and is now gonna just leave Dante so they can continue to stagger them out because they can just work with so much extra time because of it. Lip and Stalker just were a two-man wrecking crew that fight. They, they killed... First off with the EMP, they were able to kill at the start, and then they killed Lastro while they were rallying, so none of that rally armor got to the rest of the team, and that's gonna be Atlanta Rain capping here on second, moving into third with two and a half minutes left, and this is where, like, it becomes scary because Atlanta Rain, you've got Vigilante on the Zenyatta, you've got Lit back on the uh, or on the Widowmaker. Like this is where Gladiators have to really, really keep these angles close. Yeah, because you have such a long distance. The sight lines are so open. Shot doesn't quite get the takedown onto Kai, but looks to chase for more. The second they maneuver out, the dash does get them out of it. But unfortunately, Lastro goes down. This is just constant staggers, and Rain is going to just continue to take free space. Yeah, I think Lastro needs to swap here. There's, the rig is not going to get any value at this moment. You need to think, find something else. You are going to be ringing in the Zenyatta, which is so much better at these long ranges, and you can contest a little bit more. As you can see, Kai has taken down Lip, so in this enclosed area where we are a little bit more at this point, you can get those arrows to find their marker, but Lip is still going to have to be a force to be reckoned with in this scenario as we're poking and pulling a minute and 30 seconds left. Both support ultimates still available for the rain too, so if anything scary happens, they're going to be ready for it. Yeah, push and pull here through this archway. It's giving up just a certain amount of space. What a Again. shot onto Lip, able to shut it down. That's so much value for Gladiators on this defense as they get a little bit more of a window to keep peppering out these shots. Bro, Lip has six deaths, and I'm pretty sure oh the majority my. of them, if not all of them, are from Kai specifically. But Kai has his number at the current moment. Pulse Ball comes in, doesn't manage to find Pater, and now there's only a minute left. Kai looking again for a shot. You see a whiz by, a subtle hair trim on the brow. It's 55 seconds resume. Kai for the shots, gets a body, but doesn't get the elimination. This is absolutely just 
treacherous to peek out into, but now Lip has sight, so that's gonna make it a little bit more viable and prevent Kai from poking out as aggressively. Ooh, Lux, though, up top, looking for Lastro. Is going to get the solo flux onto them. Looks for the taps onto Babel across the way. They're playing two counter sides. Dragon Strike might be able to get some decent separation as Stalker goes down by the arrow. Kai's able to get that pick, and here comes a return for Vidic Flux. There's nothing to do oh with it. Fielder my. is down. Donghak will follow, and now there's 20 seconds left, and that's all they're going to have. Lip will go down, too, and this has got to be desperation right now. There, you can see Stalker is just on the Genzi to try and get someone to push, but Vigilante's caught. Oh, no. Nice kick to cause separation, but there is too many surrounding you on the stairway. It is going to be a last ditch effort swapping to the wrecking ball, even the Genji from Stalker so that they can at least keep it into overtime, but it's so far away. Everyone from Gladiator is gonna hold the line here as they finally cease this payload's progression just within the doorway. I think Babel got a sleep dart kill onto Donghak by just sleeping him, and then he rolled it. The momentum just took him off the side. I, I would love to see if he would, actually would got be, the Would we be surprised? I, I, would, I would wonder, because if he just did, like, the five... If he just got the kill with the five damage the sleep dart does, that's also very funny. I mean, you know, Babel's been performing, <laughs> and that that you can just add to the list of... The, we gotta put that on a bingo card. Like, that, that would be on a bingo card, and Babel would make it happen. So, you know, I think we, we can all agree that it's just a good old time when we have that on a play. Just realistically, and as we take a look now with a swap of sides, Atlanta Rain on the defense. They were able to get... Quite. Oh, we have any of the replay? Oh, we do that? Have the Let's replay. do yeah. that. We yeah, do I, have the I love our producers. Yeah, stay please, on please top of this. Me. Please show me. Let's hear. Da -na 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 -na. Oh, <laughs> there you go. You don't even need to load him into the cannon. The ball's just going to go. You don't need one of those cannons. Oh, my God. Look at him go. T Rockets blasted off again, bro. That is. <laughs> That is that is uh, one of the funniest things I've seen. The, the cannonball aspect makes that like way funnier. I'm glad you caught up on that. Oh, absolutely. We had. <laughs> I mean, literally, you don't even need it. You got. You don't need. You don't need the gunpowder. You don't need nothing. You just. You just need the sleep dart. That's it. That's game over. GGS. We can go home now. <laughs> As we're gonna enter into this now with the swap of sides. Uh, let's see what gladiators can do on the attack. That'd be bringing out the similar composition for the Atlanta Reign on the defensive end. Gladiators, though, bring out the Sigma again. Dante did play it a little bit, and I think on the offensive end, it's like much easier to pilot because you don't have to worry about all the flanks that they were going to be dealing with. Uh, on the other side, you can kind of position a little bit better in that way. Kai going back to their trusty Hanzo, who has been performing extremely well. I think that they're not only just their mechanical prowess, but the smarts of using like Recon Arrow, being always vigilant to where there's going to be a Sombra. Like here again, you know exactly where it is. This time, though, three men dive on you, it's very hard to work with. Yep, and, and again, it's putting so much pressure on Takai to to almost make sure that they are spread too thin. Like, it's just this constant bandwidth taken away and can't be as free to get those shots. I wonder if we do see, like, any swaps. I, I think bringing back the D.Va would be something that I would wonder about for the Gladiators, because I think, you know, Sigma does have a very good position on this map in particular, but the way Dante was playing D.Va was really good to the point where these dives from the Atlanta Rain weren't getting that value, and you could pocket the back line a little bit easier. But here, I guess you would just want more of, like, a front-loaded positioning instead of something like a D.Va where you're kind of moving around the map as much as you are. And as this payload looks to round the corner, oh, what a great sleep to deny the pile drive. Stalker, though, gets some value still as the attention goes on to the wrecking ball. Drawing back, playing the corner up the stairs, is going to get topped up just in time. Again, major props to both Vigil Vigilante and Fielder to keep this wrecking ball going. I wonder if we do see a swap to... I mean, Lastro hasn't really done a lot in terms of Vergita as oh. Dante's going to go down to a pulse bomb, and th this might be a moment where I think we might see something like the Zenyatta come to play because I think that while the way that Babel, Babel is hitting these sleeps, I think you definitely need to capitalize on that a little bit more and it's easier to kill sleeping Hammonds when you have something like a Discord in your back pocket. The timing from Donghak 2 on that shield. Just, oh, that's a five player yeah. EMP. Kai ain't gonna survive through that, as you did see at least a few recovery shots onto Dante to keep them going. Now, with a minute and 55 seconds, it's half the time, and they've only managed to gain half the distance. And they look at about one more ultimate rotation in this next couple of pushes here. Kai has been, you know, stifled a little bit because I think that Atlanta Rain are definitely respecting how good Kai has been, and that you can even see Lip is just continuously pinging Kai yeah. so that the rest of the team knows exactly where Kai is going to be, and getting those hacks out means that he's not shooting at the other team. Oh, the... 
look to try and get an him. angle onto it. They, they really are. Him. Well, and the thing is, too, is because there was a moment where you did see Kai at half health and it wasn't committed by Lip. They said, we're going to let this play out. We're going to look for the regroup. We're going to come in well-timed and get it regardless, even if I'm being topped up. Yeah, you can see a lot now, like, like Kai has had enough of the Hanzo and now is moving on to the Cassidy, which does offer you more of that, like, sustainability. You're much better in the brawl because Atlanta Rain has decided that Kai is the one that they are going to be focusing on and they're going to target. So now you get on the Cassidy. You can kind of stall the dive a little bit, especially with Magnetic Grenade, but Lip is looking again for another EMP so close towards it. Yep, nice rotate with the shield as Lastro gets the rally active. Okay to fall back playing the corner they know they've got room to work with so they're giving space for now for re-entry a great nade for keeping them topped up on dante as the emp hits on to two again lift generates it bakai with the nano comes out with the six shooter and unleashes hell to buy space and reach this checkpoint that's kai's like moment where you guys have bullied me for so long i'm sick of it i'm completely sick of it i'm, I'm gonna so be able done. to pop off here and I'm so done, be able to man. do that they're going to be able to get first point, start moving forward through second. And, and we have to remember that the win condition is essentially complete the map at this point. And three minutes is enough time to get through second here, especially because now Hammond loses a lot of value in these enclosed areas. Flip at least counteracting Kevster. They played a little bit too far forward that angle. Stalker needs to be very careful about how they play this until they can get topped up they do have the harmony orb so they just need a few more seconds to regroup as they play alongside the three of them looking for a pincer on takai but has to force the recall they can't quite get the executions they're not able to follow up onto these picks even though the health values are low and gladiators are finding stride in this high ground position and working around the outskirts and i am starting to see a little bit of the value that brings to the table with the Brigitte, as actually we do have a minefield coming out and kai ends up going down the supports were no longer there because they were zoned by that minefield Donghak will give their life for it though yeah capster Regrouping with the team. Minefields will dissipate. Last are just going to collapse onto one for now, but they will be able to get out. And just now slow methodical plays as they look to peak this last corner. They do have to be worried about this EMP coming in from Lip. He's looking for that back line again. He keeps pinging Babel. Can they keep their supports alive for Blads? Detected, hits two, bolt supports, Lastro down, Bavel gets some recovery but falls shortly after. Stalker comes in and eviscerates with toxic poisons, you could say, to bolt supports. And now looking to try and stifle this last minute and 15 they've got. Yeah, now you can see that the Winston has moved, or not the Winston, Donghak has moved over to the Winston instead of the Hammond, giving a little bit more value. Dante's going to get staggered here. A minute left with where the card is, Rich. And by the time we get to this next fight, this is going to be Gladiator's last fight. And it, because Atlanta Rain won that fight off of just the EMP, they do have a pretty decent ultimate economy to counteract what Atlanta Gladiator, or what Los Angeles Gladiators are going to be bringing to the table. The big thing, though, is going to be that pulse bomb from Kevster. Can he find that back line? All on their shoulders, Kai gets the nano, is being topped up and goes aggressively. The Deadeye is active, but doesn't pick up anyone. They manage to get out quick enough so that they don't bring anyone down from rain. And since they've fallen back, they're playing these canisters and that upper high ground until a re-engagement. Wonderful sleep though into the corner. They instantly dive onto it. So there is no more Winston in this equation. 22 seconds now. Kepster going to continue harassing this back line. Dante gaining space. They've been left alone. There's one last chance for Rain to come back into this. I mean, I don't know if Vigilante wants to commit the, uh, the transcendence to this. If they want to do it, they have to do it now and get someone to the point. Oh, Stalker down below forces the recall. Bought enough time to keep it contested as they move up the stairway. Transcendence going to give the extra healing, though Dante rotates back, trying to get the cap. Can't manage to do so. Self-destruct onto the payload. Now everyone staggers down below. Nobody clipped. Kai gets a pickup. Capster alongside them. They are managing to clean this up, reaching the checkpoint, and now going into the final stretch. I don't know how, what boops managed to put Vigilante into the entirety of the gladiators, but that was not the transcendence that the Atlanta Reign wanted. Vigilante was just in no man's land in that scenario, and now, because they committed that transcendence to that, yes, gladiators committed a lot themselves, but Lip, it's all on to Lip again. EMP available. There's only a minute left for this team, and if they can be a little bit more patient, they can just win one fight and win this map out. And you can see those darts just flying by Lip. 
Not scouting him out just yet. There is three. Kai first to go down. Both Bavel and Lastro extremely low, but topped up as they withstand the EMP. That is the first of many more picks they're gonna need. They get the DMEC onto Dante as well, and they've only got so 40 good. to work with. Yeah, and I mean, this is, now the rest of the team has to leave. They can't fight here. They don't have their tank available to them. Dante has to just throw himself off the side, and we are in complete last fight territory right here. Nano available for Babel. There is pulse bombs on both sides here. No, the biggest thing is going to be is Babel going to use that nano or in fielder are they going to use those nanos defensively to stop the pulse bomb from getting value onto someone in the back line? and now the translocator placed lift once again looking to organize with stalker onto the back going in for lastro, lastro. gets instantly shut down in the kill feed you can see all three working in tandem like liquid filling the cup to the brim the gullet you could say as they are absolutely dominating over gladiators the synergy the timing and the absolutely flawless coordination is allowing atlanta rain to be able to take this in the home stretch denying uh. gladiators from keeping any more pressure but when they have the spawn advantage i might have spoken too soon lips still trying to do what they can and they've actually got another lifeline Kevster killed both supports, was in the back line, completely zoning them out. Kai is using the Deadeye, trying to create space. This overtime is not over just yet, but Liv is coming back with EMP, and that might secure it. Yep, they're gonna get the DMAC, that is guaranteed. An opportunity with the EMP to follow up Kevster in the wing, since they are so low. A manual hack as well gets them low, but Lastro with the rally, giving that protection to Gladiators. The spawn still somewhat closer. You can see it there, the box of completion, allowing Gladiators to take this win. They're looking to push across the bridgeway. It needs to be a stalwart defense by rain vigilante transcendence leading in you've got the and assistance the of dong hang up front kai still alive beautiful counteraction babel in the back keeping him up, up pumping him into it they've gotten rid of it kester finds another the pulse bomb goes awry but still manages to get enough onto kai there's not going to be enough from rain they have to scramble onto the point can they keep it in contention lip is there they have to translocate out but underneath stalker keeping contention dante forces him out they have just under two meters and now they switch on to the doom fist to dive onto this point they fought in enough time but it's only a matter of seconds self destruct the shot them back it's only one meter can they keep them away oh they my complete God. it and gladiators pulls it off how on earth did they do that there was no business that gladiators had winning that fight but kevster in what looked like to be the complete end of the map gets into the back line by spawn one clips fielder, one clips vigilante. Babel comes back with nano, keeps Dante alive. Look at, I mean, face. They, they're, they're even like they're, they're, they're like they're like they're they're giving Babel like a lot of credit here because he his nano really saved that fight. Especially, I mean, and Kepster too. The way that they were able to get into that back line and completely turn that fight. Gladiators are looking to shatter everyone's brackets. Yeah. They, they don't give a damn right now about who's picked who. Gladiators are saying, hey, Scrimbuck Stock Exchange, it's looking a bit spicy right now. Where is this team that was like supposed to run through the bracket? Where are they now? They're down 2-1. You can just hear them chanting, we are glads at this point. And honestly, you could just see if we go back, if there was a moment that anybody wanted to screen grab something, it would be the faces of Atlanta Rain in that moment. They were stunned, floored even just, by the outcome of that. It just, it disintegrated in front of them. It shouldn't and it's, have been it possible, shouldn't. right? It yeah. Should, but when you have, this is the thing about Overwatch, is when you have players like Kevster, right? Like the, someone who can just, literally take the game by the scruff of its neck. I can't stress this enough how miraculous it is that the Atlanta Reign or that the Gladiators won that fight off the back of Kevster being able to get those two kills and then the stars aligned for the rest of it and that was going to be a Gladiators win. This is unprecedented territory, not for the Gladiators. They, a lot of them have been here before, but the Atlanta Reign for the first time, remember this team ran through groups rich they didn't even like they didn't i feel like they didn't even break a sweat playing in group stage and now yeah. they are one map away from being out of pro am entirely and now it's all on their shoulders to see if they can rise from the ashes and be the blazing phoenix that is able to outmatch the gladiators we're looking to see if it's going to be an opportunity of recovery or for them to lay waste amongst the ashes don't go anywhere friends <laughs> That is the delay tactics widely dealt with. And a 4v5 hole, not quite so much anymore. Kevster dishing out the damage. Well, this is giving me vibes of Florida against the Atlanta Rain. Oh, 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 what? That is dirty. A rough return here, wow. just kind of getting bullied. Oh, yeah, that 
Oh my goodness, Kenobi! <laughs> we having a day. I need a fan. I need just a manual a fan, fan right here. I don't here. have just, one. I need I need something to cool down because it heating up in I have, here. I have and canned air, but I don't think that'll be good at like, I'm pretty cooling sure me down. that's not safe by <laughs> any means. But we'll we'll digress amongst that as we can take a look here. There's the score line for those who have been with us. You should go tell your friends about how this is yeah. unfolding right now because we've already missed an unreal competitive match just moments ago, and now entering into this one that is going the distance. And I'm just absolutely thrilled that we get this type of competition 
in yeah. the pro-am before we even get to hop into what the main <laughs> season has in store for yeah. us. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is also quarters, right? It's like a lot of these, yeah. uh, you know, going into this, everyone was really, you know, uh, glad, Atlanta all the way, right? Everyone was thinking that this was going to be, uh, a, a lot of the bracket felt like it was going to be kind of like one and done. We know where this is going, but, you know, Toronto comes out, plays in phenomenal series against Boston. The series we just saw were like shock plays phenomenal against Houston, but just barely can't do that, uh, the reverse sweep. And now we have here Atlanta being not in the lead for the first time that we've seen them throughout the entirety of this program so far. Oh, I know, especially when we looked at like the score screen because Desk was talking about it, like how they got here through week yeah. one and week two. And you just see two O's all the way down on yep. those four things. And that's just daunting. You're like, uh-uh, we ain't even going to compete against this. Well, I'm pretty sure that the Gladiators <laughs> right now are standing tall. They've dug in deep and they are not being pushed back. And, and speaking of Glads and their success, we do have a stat card uh, from everyone's favorite Cannonball Near. Cannonball Near? <laughs> can, cannonball Near? What's the, what was Cannonballer, Cannonballer, Cannonball, Cannonballer, uh, Cannonballer, Cannonballer, better off Cannonballer. Than anything else. Yeah. absolutely. Uh, Fifty-five percent sleep dark accuracy throughout. How long that game was is unreal from Babel. And this was a player who, like, going into this, a lot of questions about them, right? You're you're coming in for someone like Shu, who is one of the best flex supports that we have. Babel, a lot of their value to me felt like it was on that Kiriko, but this on a performance, four deaths. 11 enemies slept, 55% sleep dark accuracy is a nut stat line for any Ana, no matter the caliber. Just being over 50%, 50 plus percent. I mean, look at what we had the stats from what like Shu and Finn were doing. Shu and Finn, Shu was what, 40 34 and yeah, 35 and 44. For Finn? Like this is, this is unreal that you're able to hit half of your sleep darts. Think yeah, about it, I'm, I'm a support diamond player. I can't fathom hitting 50% <laughs> of my sleep darts. I'm gonna be real. I can't imagine hitting that much just with my auto fire. <laughs> it's just let's be. Oh, let's be you can't be that bad. Come on, let's let's be real. As we digress um, <laughs> and go into the roster changeups, Kenobi, we do get to see that it is going to be Vigilante out for Chio coming in, and now for Glads, we're also gonna have Lastro out and Astro in. So we are really looking forward to seeing with these adjustments how it's going to continue unfolding. And as I mentioned, even before the break, will we see rain rise from the ashes and be able to not find themselves counted out as we do have confirmation that we are going into Esperanza. And I think one of the things that I would like to know about going into this match in particular is do we continue to see Kai on um, the Hanzo? Because I think the Hanzo has been the thing, the linchpin that has really, really stopped Lip from getting the value. Like, we know Lip to be this incredibly talented Sombra player, right? I said it before, the greatest Sombra to ever play the game. And because of the fact that, like, Kai is so deadly at using those recon darts, finding him in these areas, like, is that going to be something that Kai continues to do as we go into this Ish Bronze map? Because it was a big highlight to why they were able to win uh, Havana specifically. Mm -hmm. And the composition is something we really want to be, you know, keen on because we talked a lot about the last time we were here about the positional advantage we uh -huh. saw it on several occasions and how they play that archway and that bridgeway and it's going to lean into this as well but gladiators might take this unique selection Ooh. with the ramatra because that's something we've not seen just yet from dante we know that it's in their yeah. wheelhouse and they play it so well yeah, he, he does it so well. And the thing that I love about Dante specifically, watch what he's doing with his vortexes. He is a master at using vortex on the enemy mm -hmm. Winston to make his life absolutely miserable, right? Keep him low to the ground. Make sure that his jumps aren't getting a lot of value. Keep an eye on where Dante is focusing those vortexes to make sure that Donkai can't just dive into the back line for free. And if he does, he has to stay there for a little bit longer. Already out the gate, Vortex down. Nice sleep for the moment during partial Nemesis form. But now that that has been expended, it leaves a little bit more vulnerability. And you always want to see the value that is contributed into the Ramatra before having to force out that cooldown. And at this point, it didn't gain anything. And Rain takes this first fight. And Rain are going are gonna to have to continue to do this, where they're going to have to go like very fast. Because one of the things you don't want to do against this composition, as Rain will just completely swap, is you don't want to like stand on ceremony with Ramatra, right? You want to keep going. You want to be a little bit more aggressive. Now when we're in 
neutral, it's going to be a different story. Kai is still not on the uh, Hanzo. He is still going to be sticking on that Cassidy. So you do have a little bit more of that uh, survivability and brawl potential, but you don't have that recall. Oh, here. boop. Nice boop coming in from Chio again. How vital that is to deny Dante's entry, the chip damage, and just follow up with the melee from Stalker eliminates Kai, who really hasn't been able to contribute anything into either of these fights. And with this momentum that Rain is getting another beautiful sleep, Fielder comes in big, and this is just a snowball effect from Rain. It's only going to get worse too, Rich, because EMP is available, Pulse Bomb is available, Nano too. I mean, there's really no way for Gladiators to come out of this unscathed. It look, Atlanta will probably just complete this first checkpoint, and then it's up to Gladiators to really find a way back in, whether that's through Kevster, whether it's through a sleep from Babel. Those are the only way options back into this is Lip is going to be looking for an EMP. All four and Kai, the moment they are hacked, are again absolutely shut down, set back to spawn. Things get a little bit challenging with Dante Ooh. at least going in for the Primal Rage, make some space, the Pulse Bomb lands, but this is still Gladiators able to deny this aggression. But the checkpoint, most of all, has been reached. And I think this is a little bit of Atlanta Rain like downloading Kai slightly. Like it's not really his fault either. It's just they're throwing five people at him. Like how do you win that? It's so hard for Kai even with the survivability that Cassidy sometimes has. When you have like five people diving on you, it's just impossible. And that's really what Atlanta is good at, these coordinated dives. Oh, Babel gets Delve on and what a great synergy with Lip to take them down before they can get the nade to drop below their feet to recover from it. Rain, even though they were unable to take that fight to continue distance past the checkpoint, the recovery at the neutral position has been really, really spot on. And I think Atlanta, when they come back into this, they're gonna know like they have this advantage and they just wanna keep their pedal to the metal, like keep the pedal to the metal, right? You have all of the advantages to play with right now. You're 60 meters ahead. There's still seven minutes left in this. If you just continuously rotate these ultimates like we know them to do and play this in the macro way that we know, they're gonna have no problem. It's about gladiators now getting the onus on them to make these fights a little bit more scraggly than they have been in the past, where it's just Atlanta setting up an instantly die. Again, Lip communicating, waiting for the hack. There's the dive, comes in quickly. The rally is there, though, to give the armor, but it's not fast enough. Babel goes down, can't get the necessary coverage to keep them going. And this is just, again, it's like a snowball down the mountainside, continuing to accumulate in a mass that is just overwhelming that Glads cannot prevent its momentum. And you could see them trying as best they can, right? They're bringing in a Brigitte to try and stop the dive. But Bell hasn't hit as many sleep darts as he has, has in the previous series, right? Because Donghek is now on the Winston. And I think they realize that like with the Winston, I can play a little bit safer on my bubble as Dante dives in here, trying to create some space for his team. Nano available from Babel, but EMP available from Liv. Gonna get three, actually. Kai also in the midst of that, but a great response. Babel says, it's fine. I'll just take care of you this time. I'm tired of you, Lip. Just go back to your spawn, and we're gonna now run it back. But again, rain goes right to neutral. Yeah, that's a rare occasion where I think the dive from Atlanta rain wasn't as crispy as it usually is. Is actually- Oh, no rain, way. Go back in. They have a Nano. Yep, they just feeling real Ooh. good right now, but that's a beautiful sleep with a follow-up from Funny Astro. And uh, that's, you know, Gladiator says, we tire to you, friends. I mean, Gladiator's there. I mean, Babel finally gets that sleep and it is able to, if he can continuously do that and just take just take off one of the members, right? Because it is a four-man dive, it looks like, from the Atlanta Rain where they're sending in Chio really aggressively as well. This is a potentially a place where Glads can stop the bleeding, though, and start getting some of their own progression. They have a lot of high ground control here. As you can see from the overhead lip, not close towards that EMP. Atlanta Rain don't really have any ultimates to work with, so it's just about finding where Atlanta Rain can get onto this high ground and try and take Gladiators off. And, and this is perfectly done. You're going to have... A dong hack to jump underneath so it denies anyone from up top on the bridgeway from getting sightlines. Beautiful bio need to land as well until dong hack can re enter into this, get slept for the moment so it at least staggers out this entry and will just look to fall back. Actually gets picked up by Kai. Yeah, and if you're Donghek, you have to have the rest of the team follow you there because Shio kind of just caught, caught out in Low Man's Land. And the way Kai is playing right now, you simply are not allowed to be in an open position or else he will take your head off. And that's exactly what happens there. And now, what looked like to be a very heavily favored Atlanta Rain map is gone completely the opposite. They've gotten this checkpoint. They are going to be coming up against an onslaught of ultimates, especially that Lip EMP. But Funny Astro and Babel have their ultimates, which is going to be key in keeping them alive throughout this. But oh, oh he gets out alive. Oh, skin of their teeth! What just happened? Everything goes topsy-turny, and this is still an advantage here for Glass, but as I say that, Lip's now gonna come in with an EMP to deny, Babel goes 
goes down. They're still continuing to push this, and they actually could bypass the checkpoint here over Rain. Oh, the high noon coming in. Doesn't manage to find oh. anything just yet. Lift gets the hack onto Kai in the back line. Kai getting Pulse extremely bomb. low. The pulse bomb from Fielder is able to get down. This is massive. They're at least causing some harass as they do have still just three Kev. hitters to go. And oh, wow. It is just this back and forth. But all the while they're on the front line, there's still contention. Lip has been completely away from this bot. fight, but stole the bot. He stole the bot. So now there's no way they don't have the lead anymore. So now Atlanta Rain get this reset before the bot can touch. It's they one touch meter it. away no. to contest. Oh, they're going to be able to deny it. It's so very close. Hey, oh, my God. It is a play literally... 1.01 meters. That could be a defining factor with three minutes to go now. And Babel on this long range shot, continuing to harass, and everyone from Gladiators being extremely cautious how they enter. Nano available. Dante is dove, dove in really deep. Sleep Dart is out. That means the Primal Rage is free here for Dante. Lip is going to get now hit with the Nano to see what they can do in the backside. As you also have Chio giving the sound barrier. There's a lot of harassment from Dante, though, knocking them into the corner. Gets one onto Fielder, but they're still withstanding it. Lip could get tribute the EMP, but the Pulse Bomb as well alongside it. They're managing to get the staggers. They're picking them up, but it's Atlanta Rain denying that once again. Kevs are still alive, trying to do the best that they can, but with the respawn advantage, it's just not going to be able to happen. He's trying to pull the bot back. There's no healers right now for the Atlanta Rain. Lip is going to get a health pack and finally gets back into that fight, and the Glads, by the skin of their teeth, lose that fight, and Atlanta Rain are able to hold. There is a meter difference right now. 1.1 meters. And that's why you saw Kevster sticking close to it. They were hoping that they can get just enough presence near the bot to gain that extra distance because now with two minutes to go, this becomes critical mass. It is so minor, the distance to conclude this. Kevster in the back goes for the stick. Does it land it? It goes awry. Chio knocks them back, forces the recall. They're left vulnerable and has to tuck tail back with the rest oh. of the squad as you still have Donghat up front denying, electrocuting. Kevster's down, has no ability to escape, and there's no sightline for Babel or Funny Astro. They went for everything there. Kepster wanted to hit that, but the collapse from the Atlanta Rain onto Kepster so good there. And Gladiators, they have to make a decision and they're going to try and commit. They're using the rally. Oh, and you've got Stalker getting out. They've managed to recover. The EMP's almost here. There's oh, that God. grenade. Still alive, though. Donghat gets Dante. It's a minute 40. The damage is here. Kai is on the flank, being left alone and separated. They've deviated away from the group. Then now that they're staggered, Funny Astro is picked up, and this is looking grave now for Gladiators. Glads tried to use everything. They felt like it was in their hands in that moment. The rally came in from Funny Astro, but they don't manage to break it down. Kai is going to be kicking himself that he didn't get that flank off onto fielder and now look at the rain macro wise they are so in the lead the bot's going to be all the way on the other side of the map and glads are walking into an emp from lip and a pulse run from stalker aggressive jump forward dante separated has to retreat the hack's going to come through they're collapsing onto kai who does have the nano boost though dong hack in return has it as well primal rage available this is now 50 seconds to go. Everything has to fall in suit for Gladiators. All the puzzle pieces have to fit, and getting rid of Dong Hat for now is the perfect way to do so, so that Glads can recover. The bot has been stolen, so a little bit more meterage given to the Adla to the Atlanta Rain in this scenario. But actually, maybe the Atlanta Rain might have gotten caught here. Pulse bomb from Stalker. He's looking for the back line. Is it going to land? There's the EMP. Papel goes down again. It is just perfection from Atlanta Rain when it matters most. With only 20 seconds to go, Rain is in a position to bring this into a map five and once again have another put control map for us, Kenobi. Dante is still kind of be able to come back, has the primal rage available to them. Both pulse bombs available for both of these players, Kevster and Stalker, duking it out. But the bot will be back in the favor of the Los Angeles Gladiators. Here's the try and move forward. It's last fight territory, Rich. Perfection can be tormenting. And that's what you need from Glads right now in this moment. The pulse bomb in the wings. Great responsiveness, though. Funny Astro keeping a watchful eye on where Stalker is. That gets them the distance they play on the high ground. Stalker looking to dive back in from up top. Astro. Getting the damage. Doesn't even need to use the pulse just yet. But there's a primal rage from Donghak. Able to get two. It is now only the remaining three from Gladiators attempting to work a miraculous play out. But I can tell you there are far too few as Atlanta reigns oh, the ball. Kev Kevster finds two. They're not out of it yet. But you still have Stalker pushing the bot so they can recover. Astro's back on the point. He's trying to get as much as he can out of this stall, potentially to get someone back. Touch? I don't think it's going to be enough. Nope. Epster's heroics are not there. And Rich, we're going to another map five.
Oh my goodness, gamers, if you're not on the edge of your seat and you're not telling everybody to come here to see another map five, I don't know what you're doing in life this evening, but it needs to be here and now because this right now is just impeccable Overwatch gameplay. I mean, this is some darn good Overwatch, Rich, between both of these teams. Absolutely unreal from both of them, not just the series before this. Glad's making it so close. I mean, if anything, this gives me so much excitement for what's coming in the regular season, right? The, the <laughs> fact that the top eight of NA is playing this close to each other, that the Glad's, through all of the scrim books that we've heard about them, are putting up a fight against the team that people thought I don't think, but by the way, I, like they thought that they were going to lose a map. Yeah. And they're in a map five right now against him. And, and playing down, mind you. They were playing down to Gladiators. They have to now make this catch up to go to an even keel to now a map five. This is one of the most exciting moments i think that you and yeah. i could probably say from from a lot of 100%. things that we've watched it's as we get cool. two backs <laughs> it's cool it's, it's so, is, i mean that's that, i was going to say something else but it is it is just honestly cool but the fact that we're seeing atlanta like bleed a little bit is yeah. awesome to me because of the fact that like this was a team that like again not a lot of people thought we're going to lose that much they were going to run through this back and gladiators are saying we won two titles last season for a reason. We still have one of the best players in the world on our team. You have to go through us first. We are not something to shake a stick at. No, not at all. And we are gonna head to a short break to give a moment of reprieve before we enter into the fifth and final map to see who moves on to that semifinals game.
I'm shaking with excitement, Kenobi, as now we get a second map five between these two. Something that I think we all could say was unforeseen in yes. the cards, as it is now a two to two score and entering into our final map. And oh, it's just overall, we get to take a look at I these mean, players. You can see the intensity in their eyes. They don't want to go home. In true March Madness fashion, we're in at a position where brackets are about to be shattered completely, right? Where, where just completely, no one expected this. The expectations are blown out of the water as we do have a sub, Lastro, coming in, going to be there for Funny Astro. So Funny Astro, typically going to be that Lucio player, but here on Control, as we go to Oasis, it feels like this is his call to me at least from the glads that hey we like the double flex support look let's keep that one going yep and we're going to be able to end on the map of oasis as we did in our previous series starting off with it looks like the same first round map deja vu for all of us just different teams different names but we're hoping to still see potentially three rounds and a banger of a finish as we go Ooh, okay so this is the interesting thing about this as well rich is that no Hawk. Hawk isn't here. Yeah, this is Donald playing right now. And if he's going to be playing the Ramatra, this is typically what we would have seen from Hawk. So, so the fact that Donghak is still in here maybe tells to me that like maybe they think on Oasis they need to play Winston or need to play Ball or something like that. But this yeah. is not standard from what we saw from the Atlanta Reign in that group stage. They're trying to really cover their bases and I don't blame them for this. In addition, they've also had four maps worth of synergy that they've been working at at this point. Maybe you want to keep that too. Especially with how good I think Donghak was playing with the rest of the team. This is a different, a little bit of a different look because it is a rush style. But while Lip and Stalker aren't on their patented heroes, They've still t t statistically been very good on things like the Casty, on Stalker's May. So with this composition and compositional mismatch that we have a little bit right now, it is imperative if you're the Gladiators that you don't walk into the teeth unless there are cooldowns that have been forced like a wall or things like that. See Lip now pressing forward. They've already had to force out the Nemesis form up front just because of the pressure that's being given by Glads. Playing towards the outskirts, Dante down below, nice bio nade to buy space, and there's a follow through by Dante, but Lip still lives, withstands that electrical damage, and still continues to hold, but there's a flanking position coming out from Kepster and Kai that they're not ready for, and you've got the numbers advantage for Glads. And that was a great dive, they got the anti out, and then immediately after they knew, as oh. Kai gets another one, after they immediately knew that the immortality field was gone, Kai takes that advantage, takes all of that space on the right side, and takes down Lip, and that's a Gladiator's fight win, as they start taking up percentage and Rich, they are so far ahead in terms of ultimates right now. Pulse Bomb's gonna be here from Kevster. There's also a High Noon and the support ultimates are gonna be something that Atlanta Reign might not be able to deal with because while Immortality Field is good, it doesn't last very long. And you can see now the dive once again from Dante across the way, shield down the stairway, knocks them outwards, but is able to recover along the wall, lip being eliminated again. Atlanta Rain seem like they're just ever so slightly out of their depth at the moment. I, I, that might have been an environmental kill from Lastro as well, just booping off Lip in that scenario. Lip has not had an impact on this game so far. He's been killed by Kai, there by Lastro. He hasn't been that Lip that we know and love. And now Gladiators have five ultimates to work with in this next fight, and we're getting to the point of last fight territory. Yeah, and it's, yeah, again, 50% approaching. They get Lip a third time in a row. They know exactly exactly their focus they have their number and they are dialing over and over again i mean they focus lip lip is currently zero zero and three and it's not like his fault or anything it's just that the dive is immaculate right now from the los angeles gladiators i mean this is probably the best i've seen dante play on winston the most coordinated i've seen the entirety of the glads is they only win that fight off the back of a nano so they have more ultimates to work with this kev looking for that back line so yeah, we'll you will you know, ignore that one a little bit, but it's still a lot of presence. Sleep onto Dante, so they're left a little bit vulnerable for the moment. And there's a Pulse Bomb Annihilation. This will guarantee that Rain is able to take this back, contributing that Ooh. into this. But 
There's actually a couple of picks. What is happening? Gladiator's actually still managing to work through this as Donghap now is covered by Chio's shielding and will give them a chance to recover as they've taken it away for now and at least gain some kind of percentage. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is that they took that away because if they didn't, that could have been a completely different fight as we see Lastro going over to the Lucio. The Brigitte not really gaining as much value as they would have liked here, wanting that speed, wanting that boot potential to potentially check the Tracer as well as Gladiator is here with this high noon can go in aggressively as Kevster though gets taken out by Chio. That's gonna be a really, really big opportunity to to continue closing the gap percentage-wise. Another uh, sleep, sleep on yeah. to Dante, knocking them outside of the barrier as well. The damage is just far too high, and that mitigates anything else for them to take another fight. Both the tanks are down, though, and I wonder if this is a moment where gladiators want to go forward, especially because of the fact that kepster has got this pulse bomb. Kai getting extremely low, but healed up Nanode. Yep, both Nanode both. onto the Cassidy's. Though one is Bionated, managing to finally drop that off. Shake it off, to be exact, as you've got Lip with the dead eye. The stuck and gonna get blown to Kingdom Come. That's still percentage gained by Atlanta, but they have unfortunately found the not so great end of the stick as they're gonna get beaten back and forced away. And this is gonna be final fight that we have here. Donghak actually can't die. There's Donghak needs to live. They need to keep him alive. Oh no! Can, but they can't. The staggers are here. Glad should be able to take this. They are slowly, with their shields held high, one step at a time, pushing back against the Atlanta rain. 99 into the overtime. It is an instant swap for Lip now onto the Sombra to try and change this outcome. Stick comes in, Stalker. Babel is down. That's one, but four still remain. Primal Rage is available for Dante. They are also near Kepster's Pulse Bomb and Lastro with that sound barrier. Beautiful sleep once again onto Dante to get them out of the fight. They're swapping it back. They need to rotate onto this to Keep it contested though. Dante juggling for days, chasing them down. They want to electrify, but the Annihilation comes out onto the point to swap it back. Annihilation doing so much work here, and Lip has switched back over to the Somber, 50% towards that. Dante's diving in. The Tempo Beat is here. That's so much sustainability. Chio is down. He was mid beating Ajax. They slow it, and, and there it is in the chat. Kepster knows it. They want to put salt into the wound. They are forcing it into the crevice of the bleeding cut and now what? Atlanta is Rain is going to be able to switch this back what is happening the ability to turn this around from these two teams is miraculous what is absolute this, this fight is completely insanity I thought that there was no way Atlanta Rain could win that with the Ajax but they come back in and Atlanta Rain bring it back somehow some way and gladiators are walking into lips patented EMP in final fight territory see lift now emp looking waiting to drop it all three it's like deja vu from what we've seen before but kai manages to get topped up by the nano boost but since that's been committed lastro goes down dong hack on the front nano themselves continuing to chase down the stairway dante can't escape they're severed from the team it's gonna be a chance for atlanta rand to completely kai? turn this on its head but Kev, Kev? pulse bomb kai both dps being able to step up they've been off the point the overtime is low kai and kevster working in tandem to keep this overtime pending but the pulse bomb the trade it's back and forth. It's absolutely unbelievable to see what is happening between these DPS lines and the regroup from the tanks as they are still holding into the overtime. I mean, there's not really a lot of ultimates to talk about right now. They're just fighting mono e mono. It's completely in the neutral. Kepster is taken down by Lip. With multiple members, though, from Gladiators, they're looking to take it. They are just a sliver to swap it back. Can they sustain? Oh, no! oh no, they're off the point! No. Atlanta Rain gets this first round! Oh, no, Rich, no, not like that. No. Nope. Anyway, but like that. Ready. I need a moment for that one. I think I need a cardiologist because my heart <laughs> just stopped. What oh, an my unfortunate God. turn of events in the overtime. And because it was going for so long, the second they stepped off, it vanished in the blink of an eye, withered away so rapidly that they couldn't recover. And I... now it is Atlanta Rain only one round away from moving on. I mean, I wonder if that's the kill on to Kevster because if Kevster's not there, he's not able to continue juggling that point and that really turns the tide and that doesn't get gladiators back in to continue procking that overtime in atlanta rain commits somewhat of a robbery there and yeah. we're now one sub map away from going into the final four at the very end dong hack back on their patented hammond here as gladiators not making too many changes in their own right 
full-blown theft, five-finger discount, however you want to call it, but now you do see the swinging ball come in. The wrecking ball will be the avenue that Atlanta Rain choose, and this is why we see Dong coming in again, getting that versatility to play on this map, stuck for the moment, and having to try and escape, Ooh. but can't do so out towards the street area. I mean, Kai is still alive here with Kepster, and that might be all that the Gladiators need. Kai wow. takes down two. Somehow, some way, again, Gladiators just pull a fight out of a hat because they're stupendous DPS line just wills it so at times when you have the likes of Kai, the likes of Kevster, you can do that. And Atlanta Rain have to reset here. The percentage starts ticking up for the Los Angeles Gladiators at this moment. And they brought Lip on the Sombra again. So those engages are going to be something to look out for, especially now that the Gladiators have this high ground. How can the Atlanta Rain get there? Almost gets the mag grenade onto Chio. Would have been extremely devastating to lose that. Now you see a flanking position by Kai with recovery from Lastro. Dante has to bail. They can't stick close, but Kai gets fielder. Chio also eliminated. Kai is on another level right now. They have single-handedly been able to take both of these fights with the assistance of Dante up front. Though, there's some counter action here by two, and they are still managing to gain percentage despite them losing a few. Oh, Donkrak is here. Can they get the heals available to them? They are going to be able to go get the mini, but it's still the positional advantage right now for the Glads. Atlanta comes back in, though, with an EMP of their own. This engage is going to be a lot to deal with. Oh, the pile drive actually grazes Dante, so it denies the dive into the back to regroup, so they're so vitally low, and they need to get topped up. Glad still at 60 plus percent. The Nano comes in. Babel gives the extra necessary oomph to push forward. Kepster gets the Stalker pickup. They just get them after they're instantly delve onto, and it's all falling apart. Gladiators want to close this out and make it into a third game. I mean, 75% taking upwards. If they can kill some of these stragglers, there's going to be last fight territory for sure for the Atlanta Reign. And Lip and Stalker have to come up big right here. The support ultimates are there is going to be, as, is yes, at the same time, but it really is off the back of this EMP. Can they find that backline before the rally armor starts ticking? And now, Donghak in the back on the elevator. Looking for the high ground position to find a decent stun. They they last one last chance. Lip in the back, stealthful. EMP lands on to two. The rally is there. Is it enough to reinforce them through the attack? Glads is still alive, but Kai goes down. Lip able to work through all of the defenses that were put in by Pavel and Lastro, despite the armament. And now you have Atlanta Rain able to get their first accumulation of percentage in this second round. But I mean, Lastro does exactly what he needs to do there. And the macro play from Glads, I think, is phenomenal because look at everything Atlanta had to win just to win that singular fight because they knew if Lastro had kept that armor ticking, there was no way back in. So they had to commit four ultimates to that. And the Glads can come back now in. Primal Rage is available. Pulse Bomb soon as well. High Noon from Kai. Nano not soon after from Babel. This is a moment where Gladiators have a huge advantage and Atlanta Rain have nothing to work with besides the minefield from Donghai. And it's going to be extremely challenging with that minefield. The only thing they can hope for is maybe getting enough from Lip to have an EMP. Oh, he is more paused <laughs> no. going into it. As, as now... Hey, hey, we, hey we, you we, wanted that break. You, we got we it. Take, <laughs> we take a moment. I think we all do. I think everybody just all at home went, why, why, what happened, why? Okay. Whew. Okay, just, yeah, yeah. Bring it down. I, I've got some. I've got down. some stress balls here, chat. You can, you know. I, we can, we can... I, I don't have that. I, oh. I don't have anything to. I have. I don't know. I don't have anything. We're gonna leave it alone. Um, but yes, you you may have that. I don't. So I'm gonna have to just <laughs> breathe through it into the nose, out the mouth, as we're. Uh... Okay, so there was a keyboard issue. We just found and gained confirmation. So that means we're gonna be going back really, really fast because I believe that they're just getting that reconnected. So we're not gonna keep the tension growing anymore for you. Game unpausing, as you can see, as we enter back into this now to see what Atlanta Rain can do with this singular ultimate. That's all they have right now, the Los Angeles Gladiators. Here comes the minefield. Can they find anything off the back of it? Babel is extremely low, but so is oh, Chio. Kepster manages to find it as they ride the wall. It is Kai, now nano boosted, gaining some space. They're attempting to pummel Donghak. They've got the Deadeye. They're zoning them away. The overtime is fading right in front of their eyes. They just have to focus the remaining few stragglers as they round the outskirts. They're diving in and out to keep it contested, but they can only do this for so long as you have Dante now eliminating Fielder. It's only Chio who can try and hold them together in one piece, but with the area of effect healing, it will not be enough. Gladiator now are looking to bring this to the third and final round. It will be another one for us to reach the end all be all to see who moves on.
Aren't we spoiled, Rich? Aren't we? We are absolutely spoiled. I should. And I should go play the lottery. It's, like, ending, <laughs> it's ending on the same map we ended our last series on here at the very end on gardens. On gardens. Yeah. I mean, this is a matchup that is, again, on a knife's edge. I think Kai and Kevster are currently playing out of their skull pieces. It yeah. is insane statistically with both of these players. They both have the same damage share at 20, 29%. They are really taking this game over. And I know that this is something that they are capable of. And Gladiators, against this composition from the Atlanta Reign, they have been doing a great job of just not letting Lip get into their backline and assassinate. The peel for the entirety of the team is so good, and we go to a final decider map here between the Gladiators and Atlantis to see who will make it to the final four tomorrow. And Lip is on the Sombra as we all think it should be. The most compelling Sombra player that we have amongst the league looking to work in tandem with the rest of the squad for the initial dive onto this team. Can they outmatch it? The tumble comes down. The coverage is there. Babel is not able to go down initially, but Stalker sweeps in. A one-for-one -one trade. Both on is eliminated, but Kai falls shortly after. Is a great jump onto the back line. Make sure that they have the numbers advantage. Star getting extremely low. Can Kevs oh. finish the kill? They can. Lastro's still here, so the rally armor is er, inspired. Is doing a lot of healing and keeping everyone alive. Kevster is still a force to be reckoned with here, and we haven't swapped wow. yet. Yeah, and Shio actually gets out scot-free there with like 40 HP. You can see the chase coming down from Dante, wanting to make sure that they can eliminate it. Neither team has been able to swap it over just yet. The numbers advantage presently on his for Gladiator. The Pulse gets enough damage for Kai to follow up onto the down low position. As they get a second, they're continuing to pepper them down, and now they'll be able to take it first. And now they have control, and they can start taking upwards again. I, I think that this Brigitte pick has been somewhat of a revelation throughout the entirety of the series, throughout the entirety of just today, when we've seen a lot of Brigitte's comeback, Lastro now being on it, and there being able to give that help, the Inspire healing, doing so much when these fights kind of devolve, and I think it plays perfectly into the style LA Gladiators want to run here, and now Lastro has this rally available to them to negate the oncoming EMP from Lip. We'll see as they maneuver up to that high ground position, again, being very cognizant of how Lip is going to try and take this positioning. And here it is, gets three. What a bionate to coordinate as well. Cross map from Fielder, mind you, to instantaneously disintegrate the back three. Uh, that's a world championship nade if I've ever seen one from Fielder. I mean, what an unreal dive that was from the Atlanta Reign. And the thing about it is, is that they win that with just the EMP, which is great. And they are able to keep their other ultimates and continue to cycle them, which is what Atlanta Ring is so good at. Getting hold of a game and never really letting go. But Gladiators have a lot of ultimates in their back pocket as well, so they can match what Atlanta Ring is bringing to the table. Now Dante falling back for the moment. The rally up front looking to try and reset here. But since they've delved away, it gives a subtle opening for Atlanta Rain to take a flanking position. But Donghack has to now force the Primal Rage, looking to juggle them off the edge, but unfortunately finds them into the corner. Two go down, both supports eliminated. That continues to give Atlanta Rain the opening to generate this percentage and find the remaining stragglers. And they can win that fight off the back. I mean, it was I think it was a really good idea from the Gladiators using that rally to negate Donghack's EMP, or Donghack's Nano going forward, being that aggressive with the Primal Rage was just too much to deal with in terms of keeping that ball together that the gladiators want to do especially with their supportive backline as we come back into this though kai takes oh, down stalker that's a big huge. pick no post bomb huge now they can move in they're gonna get this for free you will have atlanta rain be very careful in how they enter kai though getting heavily shut down in the back but survives beautiful job by the bell and lastro to keep this play forward and allow that six shooter to continue so, firing sometimes you just need a pick like that and it comes from one of the mo the best performing dps we've had i think during this series so far kai and kevster have been on another level right now and they're able to win off the back of just solely that and they can move forward continue to take up this percentage we're even stevens right now rich between both these teams atlanta will come back in with an emp no support ultimates to deal with it that's the biggest that's the scariest thing for me is there's nothing to counteract this emp that lip is going to have and we've already oh, last year's oh they're smart Lastro they know almost gets it there's now the three Lastro eliminated Kai again. It's deja vu time and time again. They've swapped it away 70 plus percent here for gladiators as they're actually still buying enough time with the primal rage and they're actually holding on to this. Donghack isn't here and gladiators are looking to reach the 99. The counter dive was so smart from Dante there. He uses the primal rage and just goes into the back line and takes down the supports. And now Atlanta, they have to get back onto this point. Gladiators are on the precipice of a huge upset.
Only a last few seconds remaining. They're looking to hold these shields high. Their spears in the sky. Are they able to chant out for the victory? The overtime now reset. Stalker with one. Kai is down. It's only four versus five. The pulse bomb comes in from Kepster. They get Dung Hack. They have that tank eliminated, but they're not out of it just yet. Chio gets the elimination. It swaps back. Fielder is gone. Chio's the only support that they have to use the, the utility. The bash comes in. Rally's going to give enough protection here. They will be able to hold on to this. The overtime is fading. There's too few from Rain. This is the moment what? where all you shall hear shoulder to shoulder from the gladiators as they shout out with nothing but glee. Ahu! 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 The Scrimbuck Stock Exchange is in shambles, Rich. Complete shambles. No one knows anything anymore. Brackets busted. What on earth did we just see? That was insanity. The gladiators from Kevster, from Kai, Dante the Smarts, Babel, a revelation on this Ana. The Brigitte from Lastro, hello? Like everything was working. I think I saw before the stats left me, Kevster, 41 yeah. and four or something. Like he didn't die at all, 41 in limbs. I think Kai had like 30 off the back end. Unreal performance from this entire Gladiators team and they should be very, very happy with themselves. Atlanta Rain looked lights out in the group stage had an yep. easier group but gladiators are still him and they still have the best one of the best players in the world yep and it is just i just feel this amount of energy just exuding from my body that how intense and how close this truly was and what we really did not anticipate and with the conversation about kevster we will then I mean, also who else? be I, able I, I, to give them player of the match i don't think it could we be are, anyone else we are ready to bow down at this point and acknowledge that kevster has truly been monumental to the success here among everyone else enabling kevster to play as proficient as they have i mean while there was always talks about the gladiators and how they looked and the scrim bucks and all that the desk mentioned it when you've got someone like this who can just, at the drop of a dime, turn a fight on its head, turn a series on its head. This Havana doesn't get a win out of Glads if Kevster doesn't go back and double kill the support line. Like, this player is incredible, and sometimes you just need that one guy. The rest of the team was amazing, but Kevster fully deserving of this player of the match. The stats. Again, there were, you know, comments that you mentioned about the methodology behind the play and what they do in comparison to others. But when we look at these stats and really see their contribution as a whole in these 10 minute relationship per 10 minutes, it is just so yeah, powerful. I mean, it's just four deaths is not a lot. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I mean, realistically, it, it, like it's not. 10, nine final blows, 18 limbs. Like this is just a, this is what Kevster is accustomed to i feel like this is like the kevster we've been waiting for that like mvp candidate kevster where it, it just takes any day and if kevster's on it i think he deserves a lot of kai deserves so much credit too yeah i, I think yeah. that if we could have given it to someone else it would have been him i think he played phenomenal uh throughout the just entirety across the of the board series, especially with being able to like deal with atlanta deal with the trade uh, deal with the somber and finally like get the download because that was what i think gladiators were looking for they were trying to figure out a way to get past this sombra and they did it the brigito is also a great decision as well because it negated a lot of what they wanted to do atlanta with those engages with nano boost with emp if the rally's going you don't have that same kill potential and you have to commit more and more and more and then you're at a macro disadvantage absolutely and as we <clears throat> finally have a moment to breathe to let the heart rate decrease this was quarters not, by the way it, yeah, <laughs> this is quarters there is an extensive amount still remaining but it has been an absolute and complete pleasure to be here for this and cannot wait to see how it continues to unfold going into tomorrow where we are able to crown a winner and with that said we have to give major thanks to production at least from us here but there's still more to come but before we head on over to the overwatch watchpoint desk i am rich rad i'm kenobi and it's been a fantastic evening with all of you and the desk is going to take you home Thank you both so Woo! much. Well, they got so treated hyped. to some action and so did we. Yeah. That was that was phenomenal Overwatch we got to watch. Uh, well worth it to stay up late in that right, Necro. What time is it over there now?
Uh, it is 11-11. Make a wish, everybody. And I think Make my wish, wish is uh, good Overwatch again tomorrow. Tomorrow. I can't wait. <laughs> but tomorrow, please. Please, tomorrow. I, but, I mean, we do have to wrap this uh, up, but we do have to discuss what happened as the bracket is thinning out. This was our last match of the day. Gladiators went up against the, up until then, undefeated <laughs> Atlanta Rain. And honestly, yeah. I mean, Atlanta Rain, favorite coming into this. A lot of questions were still out there about the Gladiators' performance. I think they put those to the rest. No, they were, of course, I mean, they were undefeated in their group stage. They were dominant, to say the least, right? And even for this match, I think they had a fantastic game as well. Like, I really loved the Donghak Stalker lip sort of, I guess, dive combo with uh, with lip on the sombra and really they, they, they're they really making the use of the the hacking it was just amazing to see but at the end of the day it just wasn't enough for los angeles gladiators just babel just trying his best to keep dante alive every <laughs> single second of the match and kepster kai like when when things matter they just turn up and like they they just go crazy yeah, absolutely. I mean, the number of times that we ended up seeing Kai just across the map get somebody or just nail someone in the head with a good headshot, like, that was some of those moments where you just look at it and go, this is what we're here for, for these pop-offs, for these players to really show their stuff. And I think what surprised me for the entirety of today is just how many teams showed up and yeah. played their hardest. These are some of the best matches we could have ever hoped for, I think. Yeah, and I think, especially if you're looking at the Gladiator squad, uh, in the group stage when we had a quick chat with Dante, he did tell us that, you know, like, the other players, they were just flying in. They only just now got together. Yeah. They haven't really had a mu much time to practice. Therefore, you know, like, there was still a lot of room for improvement, a lot of stuff they want to work out, a lot of things which need ironing out. And I think they showed tremendous improvement over such yeah. a small yeah. amount of time. And that should make every Gladiators fan out there incredibly excited for the rest of the season. But the same can be said about a lot of those teams. Is I think a lot of the top owl teams have been kind of using this Pro-Am as a, you know, preseason warm-up to see where it's at. Just kind of like gauge your position a little bit, finding their footing in the meta, if you will. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I also think, I mean, Gladiators, they were just, I think they were just so, so surprising. I, I don't think we expected them to, first of all, win, but like in such, they were just on point. Like everyone was on point. Especially, I think Dante was, has been, has been so, I think, I guess, impressive throughout the whole pro -Am tournament. And I'm just excited for Dante Tank even more now. Don't take, don't take, don't take, don't take. I mean, they definitely ruined the, the scrim box exchange market. So I think a lot of mo yeah. people lost a lot of money and out there. And our fantasy uh, bracket. The fantasy uh, bracket, everything's yeah. closed. Uh, yeah. I don't want to talk about that. Why did yeah. you have to bring that up, Dan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, you can you can complain uh, to the team themselves. We do have a post-match interview with Dante, uh, and I'm sure he's going to be excited to hear how he ruined everyone's bracket. And then some Dante, congratulations! You guys made it into the semis. Thank you. I appreciate that. It was an amazing match, Dante. We had just, I, it was just hype. It was exciting from start to finish. And we love to see you guys coming out on top at the very end of that. But let's talk about how you got it done. Uh, you went up against the Atlanta Rain, which for a lot of people just looked like an absolute juggernaut during the group stages. Um, what did you identify watching their games in the group stages to be like their weakness? Or like, what was your approach heading into this match? Did you have a specific game plan based on what you've seen them play before? Um, well, we know Lip is just crazy as well for us, so we tried to put together a comp that we thought would be good against it, and we just talked about how we're going to play a lot, and we just played the game. Just play the game. Well, you make it sound so simple and so easy, which I'm sure it was not. <laughs> I think both uh, teams there had to sweat a little bit. Now, of course, you are in the semifinals. Um, how are you feeling about your opponents in the semis? Are you happy with the with that, or are you worried? Um, Anything you want to say to them? I don't know. You, you guys are. I think you guys are playing up against Houston. Houston, Houston, Houston Outlaws. Outlaws, yeah. Oh, Houston. Oh, that'll be really exciting. <laughs> uh, both teammates, Pelican. Yeah. I'm excited about playing some. It like adds extra rivalry. Yeah, we love that. Yeah. You're a bit of a turncloak here, obviously. Do you do you prefer the purple more than the green? 
Just as a fashion statement. I don't really have a preference for the colors, but I like them a lot more. Like, oh, they're just so nice. Okay. Well, I, I love seeing you in purple. I think it's a great color in you. And I can't wait to see more from you and the team this season, but also, of course, tomorrow in the semis. So once again, congratulations. And thank you so much for taking the time for a quick chat. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thanks, Dante. Bye-bye. Have a great evening. That was Dante from the LA Gladiators, who just got the big W over none other than the Atlanta Reign, who are out again. It's a single elimination bracket, right? So uh, let's take a look at what else transpired today in the quarterfinals. And remember, of course, that tomorrow when it's all going down, it's for all the marbles. 100,000 US dollars prize pool are up for grabs overall. And uh, it's going to be a hard fought battle if today is any indicator, because the matches we had today were close, man. They most were, of them were, were very close. close, yeah. Most we of them, yeah, most the first one. <laughs> yeah, I, told, I completely forgot the first one. It was I'm a lot. Like, I forgot it ever happened, to be <laughs> perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> well, let's look ahead, right? Right? I mean, Dante made such a great point that he gets a chance to play against his former team in the Houston Outlaws, and there's a little bit of that friendly rivalry happening there as well at Toronto versus Florida. Yeah. But we got a chance to talk to RuPaul and seeing that Sermajed as well as Hydron are on the other side. So I feel like we are still in for some great matches tomorrow. I feel like tomorrow's gonna be yeah, all of the matches are gonna be great. Looking at how looking at all the teams and how they performed today. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Now uh, then all <laughs> our brackets are busted, uh, uh with hindsight. <laughs> what uh, are the new likely finalist picks? I'll give you a second chance here. So new? Be... New? No, no, no. Yeah, I always no, no. what are you talking about? If you look, if you go back, I said the same thing. I think Houston Outlaws against Toronto Defi Toronto. Toronto Defiant <laughs> is gonna be uh the they're gonna be the finalists. You know, I, I don't know. I, I I'm you not too sure who's gonna that. win yet. Yeah. yeah, I said yeah, but yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure I said Houston Outlaws and Defiant. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Never yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I remember. Right? Well, well, listen, listen, listen. Maybe I, so my whole bracket overall didn't get boomed because I didn't put Boston Uprising winning